and we're going live in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the stream. My name, as always, is Mr. Harlan Guthrie, and I am here with my crazy brother, Alex. That's me. I'm crazy. And my even crazier friend, Justin. <laughs> And we are here with Scooby Doo and the Call of Cthulhu! Woo! That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is going to be one for the record books. Not only is it the first time diving into a series that I don't even fully understand, it's also going to be the first time we are doing a mashup of systems and cultures and stories and playing something that already exists and something Whoa. that I wasn't even really that big of a fan of. I am so Whoa. excited! Whoa! <laughs> And I think you're referring to Scooby-Doo. Not Call of Cthulhu, no. And not Call of Cthulhu. Well, I think we all know that I've been a pretty big fan of Call of Cthulhu. Although you wouldn't yes. know, because there's very very much a lack of Cthulhu in all of the games we've ever run. Ha! Uh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, it is Wednesday night. Thank you for hanging out with us. We are pumped up and ready to gasp. <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> and trombone sadness. That's right, we're using all the sound effects tonight for the Scooby-Doo and the Call of Cthulhu. Whoa, oh, you're driving sorry. the top of the dawn. <laughs> I forget that happens. I'm okay with it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with us on this Wednesday night. If you are watching us for the first time, welcome! This is the perfect introduction game. Because it's going to be frilly and silly and... Billy... Willy, nilly. And uh -huh. Nilly. And what other names, Justin, that rhyme with that? Scrumptious. Mm, mm, <laughs> mm, that, mm, yeah, yeah, that's scrumptious. But uh, if we're going up to high altitudes, it'll be hilly. It'll be hilly. <laughs> it's the perfect uh, game to, to join the Invictus stream. Uh, but why haven't you joined already? This is a community of friends and family and hanging outies. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a great place to be. But more on that in a second. Of course, it is an 18 plus show. If you are uncomfortable with no no words such as boobies and. and, 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 and Kaka poo poo. And kaka poo poo. And other, mm. other words that I'm not allowed to say. Daddy talk. Daddy, daddy <laughs> talking. Uh, then, you know, you go ahead and you close the video. No one's going to hold it over your head. No one's going to make you feel bad. But before you close the video, you make sure you like the video. Um, mm. Because it makes us feel really, really good. It makes Alex get more hair gel, and we all know he needs it's that. It's true. And so whether you like the video or actually like the video, like it. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much that's the takeaway from whether this. Whether you like it or not, like it. <laughs> like it or not. Either you put your thumbs up on the page or your brains or something like that from Godfather. Um, Scooby-Doo, <laughs> what are we doing? That's right. Um, also, when you like the video, it feeds Justin little chicklets of Justin feed. Yeah, they're chicklets, actually. They're, they're little, <laughs> literally They're chicklets. literally chicklets. He swallows from them Halloween, despite them like, being gum. 1994. Just really stale fucking chicklets. Really stale. Um, delicious. And uh, when you like and subscribe, and besides the chiclet benefit, uh, it also makes us feel really, really good. So please do it right now, in fact. Right now, right now, do it. Um, also, join the Facebook group. The Facebook group is where all the cool people hang out. Uh, and I include you amongst those cool people. If you have yet to join, uh, get on your low horse, not your high horse, and scamper over to the Facebook group. What? and join because that's where all of the family and community interact and hang out and when you join the Facebook group you yeah. enter the elite possibility of winning MVP what's MVP Alex? Oh. it is MVP Correct. which is actually an acronym though so mm. I only pronounced how we say it here uh, it's, it's uh, light amplification through the sonic emission of radiation yes MVP. which stands for the most valuable post you see every week He's well said. And further to further that point, Justin. Uh, yeah. So uh, MVP this week is gonna go to Rob Donaldson. Woo! What? Rob Donaldson. Right. Yeah. yeah. Rob Donaldson. He, he drew Rob some Donald. pretty cool pictures. He's fucking awesome. And yes. he's he's a, a relatively new member, and he joined at the same time as his girlfriend. Both of them apparently watch together, which is awesome. I love when couples watch together. Michael and Brianna do it. John and and Rin do it. Uh, occasionally, Mark and Victoria do it. And now I have Rob. a question. What do you think? What? Do you think the couples that watch really do? Do or, it. Are they snogging? While they're watching? Are you saying your kitchen? <laughs> they're snogging? Are they snogging oh, with they their egg noggin? Are they snogging while they're watching? I don't oh. blame them. If Justin's on TV, I would probably. I would be. Too. My nether regions would tingle a mighty tingle. That's what I'd be doing on TV. On, 
when produced. I'd be telling everybody watching to you do that. Go. Put your arm around him. Snuggliness. <laughs> um, but that's right. Well done, Rob. Rob did a fantastic series of portraits for our Shadowrun characters. Uh, and also did a space monkey picture from the Evil Within stream 2 that I'm currently uh, suffering through. Uh, which is interesting because there's no space monkeys in Evil Within 2, but I, for some reason, want to force them in because I think it would make such a more compelling story. And and really, I think that's all what the world needs, more space monkeys. That's literally the only thing I know about the game, space and it's monkeys. not even an aspect of the game. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, that's, that's, that's the Highland effect. You only get to yeah. know what he knows, and most of the time he's not right. Uh, so well done, Rob. A sincerely fantastic job. Fantastic. He's also offered to draw a few other characters, and and uh, he's offered to illustrate the diaspora uh, world that we're creating, which I think is really fucking cool. Woo! People snogging. Yeah, snogging. People be snogging. Oh, snogging! Oh, God! Is it, oh, look at that! They're oh. snogging. Oh, who's snogging? Um, is it diaspora or diaspora? I say diaspora, and I'm gonna stick with it. That's what I say too, but I think it is diaspora. Yeah, Harlan started a movement. Just a diaspora. Kid in oh, it is Jesus diaspora. Please. I just did the audio, and they can all hear it too. Diaspora. You're right, guys. Diaspora. I'm wrong. <laughs> but I'm going to continue saying I diaspora because I'm stubborn. Are we um, going to get flagged now for copyright infringement? Possibly. Although I do use you the plays on Wikipedia. For Scooby on the credits, so I think we're fucked either way. Um, but yeah, well done, uh, Rob. Uh, awesome work. Keep it going. He said something like, uh, "I don't want to flood the Facebook with my stuff." <laughs> you don't have to be here long enough. That, that's Flood what we away. like. <laughs> Flood away. Flood away. Besides the fact that uh besides the fact that it strokes my ego, which can't get possibly any bigger. It constantly needs to strike. Uh it's just fantastic work and you have a great art style too. So uh let's all continue sucking Rob's dick for the next ten minutes and then we'll move on to the game. Yay! Well done, Rob. Fantastic job. The SRD Awards. Exactly. The suck, suck Rob's Dick Awards. But it's just Rob. It's, right. it's just <laughs> Rob's. It's not much of an award system if it's just Rob getting the, uh, the award. Uh, tonight's going to be a weird one. We already did the 18 Plus, so we're safe. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen Scooby Doo, why are you watching this? But if you have watched Scooby Doo, uh... <laughs> go back go and back. watch every episode. Of Figure Scooby -Doo. it out. Otherwise, you're not going to get a thing. Well, actually, every episode is the same. Every episode has the same six elements on Wikipedia. You can find it. It's like every episode consists of this, 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 which made that writing room probably pretty, uh, pretty fucked up. They get all fucked up on coke and shit. And this is like the late '60s, early '70s too. So they probably were. Like, Probably man. acid. Or Probably acid, acid, too. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, this week, let's just have Shaggy really fucking hungry, like, all the time. Oh, I don't know. Uh, like, man, I don't know, man. Oh, school, I don't know. You're um, better at doing it. Well, that's because I'm playing all the NPCs tonight. Yeah, These guys so have chosen to practice. pick new characters. That's why Wooly and Lamar are not part of the... But we written it in, so don't you fret. No one worries. <laughs> no one worries. It. Give it a few months, it'll be canon. It will be canon. Yeah. They'll message us and be like, Hey, you mind if we write you in to the show, Scoob? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! All right. Um, what else do we have to go through? Uh, MVP. Uh, spooky stream. Maybe I'll do one this weekend. Yay. Yeah. Why not, right? Uh, yeah. Probably maybe Friday night. So YOLO. If you guys... If you guys if, if you want a spooky stream, someone post, uh, does anyone want a spooky stream? And if you if people like it, I'll do a spooky stream. Space monkeys. Space monkeys. It's not as fun to do it when it's just me talking to myself, because I don't need to stream for that. I can just be in my room talking to myself. Mm -hmm. my Which you do. With my dick mm -hmm. out. Um, uh, oh, yes. And a happy birthday to Misty. Misty K. Uh, who has done a really fantastic thing, actually. Uh, hold on a round of applause. <laughs> Now, we don't normally do birthday shoutouts on the air, uh, but Misty, <laughs> I don't know, for some reason it makes me feel like that's an egotistical thing to say on the air, even though it's not, yeah, the there's no air. But anyway, Misty, uh, and shout out to Hans Zieger, who did do it on his birthday as well, uh, but I missed it and I didn't quite understand at the time. But apparently Facebook's allowing you to tap your birthday into a charity now, which is really fucking cool. Yes. Um, and a great move by mm -hmm. them. So totally. Uh, so Misty has um, uh, hooked up with a suicide prevention charity, I believe it was, uh, for her birthday. So if you are feeling generous uh, and want to wish Misty a very happy birthday, please go ahead and follow the link on her page, or as I posted in the group, and throw a little bit of money that way because I think that's a really good cause. If you're putting, you know, if you're putting any of your your money uh, towards charity in any way, shape, or form, 
you deserve to be uh, acknowledged for that. So well done, Misty. Fantastic job. And uh, it's also okay to be greedy too. If you want presents for your birthday, I'm not going to judge you. You do you. You do you. Yeah, you know for sure. Sometimes I get pissed off when you're like at the checkout line and they're like, "Would you like to donate a dollar?" And you're like, "Yeah, I was here like two minutes ago," and you ask me the same thing, and then you walk in, they're like, "Would you like to donate?" It's like, listen, there's a lot of times I can donate. I can't do it right now. Reminds me. You know what? When that happens, I actually the second time I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Because usually the first time I'm in like such a daze, <laughs> I just like go through and I don't even pay attention. But the second time they ask me, shit, Justin, I'm like, wow, thank you so much. You're the reason you they know? do that. Yeah, I'm. You know what's uh, funny? I, <laughs> go on. No, no, I was just gonna say I'm a I'm a guy with a hoodie. So <laughs> he's not wrong. <laughs> I'm in such a rush trying to get through that I don't know. Oh yeah, sure, I'll give it to kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After robbing the place, give me all your money. Would you like to donate? $1? Now donate all of this to <laughs> the charity. <laughs> for the record, for the record, uh, I I don't think that's bad. But I I I, I kind of love when they kind of make you feel guilty, which which is like we're like, would you like to donate a dollar to whatever whatever? And you're like, uh, you know what? No, not to. Then they're like, oh. Really? Oh, a dollar? And they're like, Ever, everybody, everybody's done this, or whatever it ends up being, right? And they're like, oh, it's really You're the fucking first person. funny. So, well, South Park did South it Park. the best. So Cold fucking good. Works. Every time he goes, it's like it increasingly increasing. The best one is like where there's a cardboard cutout of a starving child. And he's like, would you like to he's like, would you like to donate for first to feed children after? He's like, no. He's like, okay, I just need you to reach out and pull the food from the child's mouth. It's, it's <laughs> just, it's the only way that we register. Actually, <laughs> 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 pull the food from his mouth. <laughs> just fucking terribly but, you know what's uh, funny though actually this is a good segue into what i was going to say is that i i i gave to a charity about a year ago and i'll give again this year because i i believe in it. it's like sick kids hospital uh or children's miracle network of hospitals no okay. i believe it's the toronto sick kids hospital you do but know we raised money for that too i know just and that. i feel like telling them that too but they keep harassing me like calling me mm. and being and like really being kind of pushy yeah. almost to the point where they're trying to sell something well, it's tough. you know what right. i i but i almost feel like good about it because i deny them that i'm like no stop bothering me and then i just go online and donate anyways yeah. <laughs> I'm like yeah, no, no, no. you thought you were gonna get something from me but you are well it's tough because like there are charities that don't really like the, the policeman's ball like you know right. what I mean? Like there's like people like yeah. the, oh, the firefighters. Don't get me wrong, policemen, firefighters, great. I know there's firefighters and policemen that or people that work with them on the stream, but like you know, starving kids and like and like Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals, which was a great cause. And a lot of these charities, they you know skim off the top and shit. And like there are charities that ninety percent of the proceeds go to like everything else but what you're meant to be doing. Oh yeah. So like it's there really are good. shady shadier aspects of it, and uh, I don't know. It's tough. I think I think it's good to be charitable. Uh, but it's tough to be charitable like twenty four seven because I mean you just got oh. so. otherwise you I mean you gotta you gotta also live otherwise your... you give it all away and I don't wanna give it all away. I wanna buy myself a nice pair of shoes. <laughs> I just I, I don't know what you're doing there, but it's that's great. Not, that's just that's a, that's the character for tonight. That's that's I gonna just, be a guy. That's a guy? That's one of the it. characters? Yeah, that's maybe. the guide? That's the guide. Oh, cool. I was just gonna say that I just sent thoughts and prayers. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> don't even start. That's gonna, that's gonna alienate fifty percent of our audience. Right oh no! <laughs> Thoughts and prayers are with you. That's worth a lot. Um, and on that note, oh, is that oh, Cthulhu? It's hello. Domino's. I think that's Cthulhu. Uh -huh. Speaking of Domino's, has a great new commercial. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's a it's a Ferris Bueller ripoff, but with with Steve from Stranger Things. Oh, is I it? Fucking love that guy. He's like the best character on that show. What? Yeah, yeah, Scooby. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> right. got Talking about commercials for pizza. Hey, Grandma Ma talks about commercials all the time. You know what? That is for us and Grandma Ma only. But I love Grandma Ma. Grandma Ma is the best. She is the best. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it was nice to see you guys. Nice to see you guys. Have a good night, Have everybody. A night. <laughs> see you around the stubel. Um, I'm good. I'm still gonna play if you guys don't mind. Yeah, you do. Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna take right. off. If you figure All it right. out. <laughs> so yeah. Scooby Doo and the Call of Cthulhu, uh, starring Justin. All right. Uh, all right. All right. Let's do this. Credits. <laughs> Credits, and then and then into the game. I guess. Excellent. I guess just figure out what I'm doing. Hopefully they're long enough that I can watch them. Uh, you probably not. I'll just meme. You just do you.
It's Scooby Doo. Where are you? The, the back, the backup team. Oh, starring those guys, the mystery team. But actually, the backup. And a spooky ghost who leans out. Oh, he almost grabbed her, and then it gets pulled into the thing. And it's spooky. And there's a spooky ghost and lots of running and sounds. Oh, and Alex is a oh, scared dog. And, uh, rollerblades. Oh, and Justin's in it too. Cold showers. <laughs> laughing, but friendly laughing because they're your friends. Spooky skull. Who's Harlan good? It's okay to be afraid. An underwater man and an um, barrel. And they're um, running towards a glory hole and robots. But don't be scared and be quiet because there's eyes that are going to look at you. And reading is really healthy. Scooby Doo, where are you? Lick, and lick, lick cotton candy off your dog. Oh fuck! Uh, call uh, the Call of Cthulhu as well. Scooby Doo and the Call of Cthulhu. Scooby Doo and the Call of Cthulhu. Let's do it. The beautiful blonde hair of Fred turns around to the two of you, sitting in the back of the mystery machine. We're not just here to help, guys. We're here to better the world to solve mysteries and help the downtrodden, to be the shining light on a starless night, to be the beacon of hope that people turn to when they need it the most. It's what we do, and you too represent the greatest achievement we could have hoped for. Expansion. Lamar, Wooly, you two have beat out a long line of applicants in our high school to join the Mystery Machine team. And you sure are lucky, because I don't know about you, but there's nothing better than cruising around on a Saturday night with your three best pals and their dog, solving mysteries, and getting into some zany situation. So what do you say, guys? Are you ready for some fun? Uh, I just I just asked if we could get McDonald's. <laughs> uh... Lamar. And Fred turns around and continues watching the road. Next to him I'm... sit Velma, Daphne, and Shaggy, and Scooby's in the back looking at himself. I'm only here from Canada because I'm Shaggy's cousin, Wooly. I didn't really sign up for this. And either. Shaggy turns no. around to you as you say that. And he's like, listen, Wooly, you're going to have such a great time. School back there is like my best friend, like Zoinks, and you're going to love it. Just wait. Oh. Your best friend is a dog? Great. Yeah. We both have a similar over. appetite. And he pulls out a box from underneath the seat, and there's a and there's a big fucking box of Scooby Snacks, oddly Ooh. named for the dog in the back. And he pulls wow. one out and he tosses it over your head. And Scooby, who's licking himself, jumps right up in the back of the van, shaking the whole thing. It's a massive Great Dane, and snaps his jaws just above your head and comes back down. And then, you swear you hear it say, "Thank you." And it turns you to your own. Uh, and I look over at Lamar. Right. The two Yo. of you go to high school with four very bizarre people. Uh, Fred, Daphne, Velma, and Shaggy are sort of very cliquey at your school. They're very quiet and shy. And frankly, between the two of you, you being closer friends, decided to reach out to these uh, loners and maybe include them on some of your late night Saturday uh, night fare, like going to McDonald's and, and such. Yeah. And uh, I turn to Wooly and I say, yo, you know, uh, you know, Daphne up in the front. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do I know Daphne? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Just <laughs> she's her. totally fine. Am I right? It's strange kid i mean she's hanging out with the with my cousin nah man nah man she's totally cool so we're gonna we're gonna be nice to daphne yeah and uh i'm gonna my plans to invite her out to one of my uh ciphers like a tuesday night i'm a rapper so like i'll, I'll like get oh. her in on that and i'll get to impress yeah. her maybe maybe even tonight actually like maybe like like I don't know. I don't want to be like, yo, I'm going to rap in front of you and then impress her like that. But like, if the situation arises, I no, think I'm, I'm going to go flow. For it. I'm going to flow. You know what? And I, yeah, have you seen Fred? He's got guns like you wouldn't believe. The guy's, I, he, I think he's on the football team. Yeah. He's a pretty cool dude. I might get some pointers from him later on, you know, how to buff myself up, you know, he's on, be cooler. He's on the football team? Yeah. I kind of look up to the guy. I mean, after all, 
he is hanging out with my cousin and this weird dog behind us. Yeah, Did yeah. Did you hear it? it sounded yeah, like right. it was speaking English. <laughs> no, nah, man. No, nah, man. No dog speak English. Yes. And as you're talking, um, the four of them are uh, up front are sitting oddly close. <laughs> And you're sort of searching the back of the van. Now, the back of the mystery machine, which is what they call it. And again, the two of you thought you'd sort of do a favor to these four loners. And uh, basically, the two of you at school, after school, you're relatively popular yourself. And and you kind of uh, decided, all right, you know, we'll, we'll go out with them. And they peeled up in this weirdly painted van, bright colors, uh, you know, and, and opened it. And in the back, you have... There's ladders, rope, flashlights, uh, plastic bags, uh, a lot of sharp cutting utensils. Just disco ball, no disco doubt. Disco ball, just shag carpeting, just a, yeah. a, a, a plethora of, of various implements for a, such a variety of, of capers and, and jobs that you just, you're <laughs> utterly confused. And the four of them are sitting in the front bench seat. And as you're talking, your eyes are searching it almost seems like they're sitting weirdly close together, like on top of each other. Their hands sort of all stretched out over each other. Shaggy's hand close to Fred's lap and, and Fred's lap close to Velma's lap. And they're, they're very close. It's strange how we each got all this backseat to ourselves. Hey, well, and, and a dog. You can almost like stretch out. Well, yeah, except for Scooby-Doo here. Oh. Scooby. Hearing his name, he, he comes up from eating his... Scooby snack and says, That's right, Rolly. I, I, uh, Lamar, did you hear the dog? He just we, said, he just said, it sounds like he just said, That's that's right, Wooly. Well, sorry, man, I have my headphones in. Well, you're kidding me. Fuck. I don't, I think you're crazy, man. I don't go talking, dog. Man. I'm, I'm, and, and as I'm saying this to Lamar, I look up and between uh, Fred and Shaggy, I see Velma. Mm. And the glint of her thick rimmed glasses catches a street light and hits me. And I just feel it deep within my pants. <laughs> Your pants are tense and hard as you speak. Oh my God. God, Lamar, and I put my hand over, and I accidentally brush past Scooby Doo, and I touch Lamar's shoulder, and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and 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 as, as Velma turns to you, little little floaty hearts appear around her head. She turns almost slow motion, brushing her dark brown hair behind her thick rimmed glasses, and Dreamweaver plays. Um, oh, 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 Dreamweaver. Funny, I had that same fucking song That's in my head. Right. The exact same song. And so you reach over and touch Lamar. Lamar. Yeah. Look, she's beautiful. Oh, dream weaver. <laughs> and I like, yeah, I'm man. singing it. And as I'm, as I'm getting encompassed, my voice slowly changes and I say, uh, uh, hi, I'm Wooly. And I reach out to shake Velma's hands. And uh, Velma sort of turns around and says, Well, there you are, Wooly. Nice to meet you. I'm Velma. And Shaggy turns over and says, About time you use your real voice, Wooly. And behind you, you hear, <laughs> That's Shaggy. Scoob. Shaggy, you know I try to hide our family voice. <laughs> there ain't uh, nothing Velma, wrong you're... with it, Wooly. Uh -huh. So nice to meet you, Velma. Like, 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 really nice to meet you, Zoinks! And as you reach out uh, to touch her hand, your hand sort of just comes close to her, and you see her soft, lily-white, small, dainty hand just come into yours. But before you can touch, the wheels screech, and all the <laughs> implements hanging on the walls just kind of move forward and back. Scooby comes tumbling through the two of you and smashes into the back of the bench before you with a <laughs> sound which seems very irregular and uh Whoa. and Shit, uh, is everybody all right yeah of course we're all right lamar we're just out of gas and leaning over you see the gas <laughs> empty <laughs> wah, wah, wah. oh here we need to get this guy. yo daphne 
Daphne, you feeling fine? You all right? You're wearing your seatbelt, right? And Daphne turns around and says, of course, Lamar, safety first. <laughs> Why, but why did you slam yeah. the brakes? <laughs> and Fred's like, we're out of gas, of course. And he steps out of the van. <laughs> oh, man. And within a second, all four of them are out of the van. And, and the door is open. And somehow Scooby's out, too. Like, almost in, like, a jump scene. Like, they're just standing outside of the van. And the two of you are alone in it. Uh, should, should we help them? Yeah, let's let's get out. So, get, 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 and like, yeah, we struggle. This thing? We struggle to like. There's no space. Yeah. Oh, the oh. door is jammy. And eventually, I like, I I decide I'm gonna try to like get out the back, mm -hmm. out the back hatch, but like my way is blocked by a bunch of boxes and stuff. I imagine. Oh yeah, there's filled with boxes. Damn it! Damn it! Right. Do I see anything weird on the other any of the boxes? Yeah, give me a spot hidden. Okay, all right, all right, all right. That's right. So, We're playing Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah, that's what this is all about. So uh, I roll that. I got a zero, 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 triple zero. Is that a hundred or is that zero? That's D one. That is a hundred. So that's bad. you see nothing, and as you go to look at at nothing, you break. Everything. Just, nothing. You just see nothing. Your eyes go blind for, for the rest okay. of the game. <laughs> All right. Well, I get out. I, I get out the side door finally. And uh, I observe. Where are we right now? And uh, Velma says, Well, based on where we were last, I think we must be somewhere near Rhode Island. And Fred says, I don't think so, Velma. Actually, I think we're near Massachusetts. And Daphne says, that's right, look at the map. And she pulls it out, and a large map spreads out in front of the four of them. And they all kind of look. And you see, weirdly, like a, almost like a dotted line to where you are. And even though they picked you up on the outskirts of New York, <laughs> somehow you ended up just north of, like, Boston. How did we even end up here? What the? Looking around, it's nighttime, I assume? So, yeah, you exit the van, and uh, it's, a, it's a quiet country road uh the, it literally you see smoke crawling off from the woods towards the highway the trees are barren stripped uh, the <clears throat> autumn wind is unmoving and yet they seem eerily looming over into the road the the full moon lights the sh the strip of road before you which curves off on a hill either way so you can't quite see where it heads but something about this area seems almost picturesque and painted as it were and you exit your hard-soled shoes stepping on the soft pavement and you turn uh, towards the four guys it's a eh? it's a little <coughs> it's a little cr creepy out here no you're telling me woolly and shaggy <laughs> uh jumps up into the dog's hands and <laughs> lamar you're, you're exiting the van so you don't see this, but Wooly, from yeah. your perspective, a full man jumps into the air and the dog stands up and puts its paws out and holds the man for a second. And just as Lamar turns the van corner, he drops him and goes back to standing on the floor. <laughs> Lamar, Lamar. Yo, yeah, man, no, no, I'm not scared at all, bro. I mean, it's just the countryside. What's so scary about it? Is that a road called CAA? Wait. You were the AA? Dog. Regular the AA. The, 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 the dog! Yeah, the dog! Time. Yeah, I know. There's a dog there. We, whatever. Yo, so is there some sort of, like, uh, gas station nearby? We could go pick up some fries? Great thinking, Lamar! <laughs> and and uh, Fred reaches into the, to the seat that you were just sitting behind and pulls out a large jerry can. Why don't we all walk to the nearest gas station and try to find some gasoline? That's a great oh. idea. And maybe some Joe Louis, too. And from the back, Shaggy and the large Great Dane that's standing beside him go, mm, I don't know, guys. Maybe we should just stay by the van. <laughs> okay. And seeing the opportunity to walk and maybe potentially hold Velma's hand, I turn to Shaggy and I say, Shaggy, come on. Come on. Fred, Fred, Fred seems to know what's going on. Let, let's, let's, let's walk. Come on. Like Whoa. you've never been on one of these before, Wooly. You just wait and see. Zoinks! You mean you guys run out of <laughs> run out of gas often? And uh, and Fred's like, wouldn't you know it? Almost every weekend we have some sort of car problems or other. 
we've had broken tires, we've had out of gas, overheating. God, this old clap trap, and he kicks the uh, <laughs> van, and as he does, it kind of goes, -kung -kung, and you swear, in the distance, you hear a laugh track. Just cause. They're laughing at us. Did you play it? No. <laughs> just, <laughs> I just, <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I gotta start Man. using the laugh track because I forgot Scooby Doo has a laugh track actually. <laughs> yo, I turned to uh, I I turned to Willie and I'm like, yo, man, I just got this weird feeling like there's people out there watching us, you know. <laughs> I just like I feel like there's like people laughing. Nah, never mind. It's crazy, man. It's laughing crazy. at you, I know. What? I, I get the same sinking feeling, especially how Fred kicked that van and it just kind of fell apart. I'm starting to think this was a uh, not a great idea to come out with these fellas. Yeah, I don't know. Even Daphne is starting to. I don't know. Maybe I gotta talk to her. And as, as you say that, she goes, "Ooh, I'm chilly." And you see Fred <sighs> sort of turn to her and say, "Daphne, you should have brought your jacket." Yo, I got a hoodie. <laughs> you want you want to wear half my hoodie is big it's biggie small size and she kind of says oh lamar sure i guess and she kind of walks towards you expecting yeah it. it'll fit both of us right here um and just before you kind of lift it up to put her in you hear jinkies and you sort of stop and velma with her hand sort of outstretched to the other side of the road she says look it's a hotel and there's a very picturesque little hotel sign that says Holton Hotel and then a tapped on sign that says featuring the Haunted Wax Museum. And as you read this, you hear thunder echo in the distance and a little bit of rain starts peppering the top of the car. Oh man, is it raining? Uh, Velma! And I take off my, my jacket and I put it over her head. Let's, let's get you under this, into this building here to protect you from the rain it says like a, like a mile like it's pointing into the woods and there's oh. like a path that run into, in, it runs into the woods let me rephrase let's run to this closest building Velma and I take off my jacket and I hold it over top of her and you do and, and she kind of says <clears throat> thanks Wooly and, and Shaggy goes like let's get out of here and uh, he does this <laughs> 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 and he starts leg is spinning the... <laughs> yeah and uh, Shaggy again Lamar you're you're playing with your hoodie with Daphne and uh, and you swear you fucking hear Wooly you swear you hear the dog say okay Raggy and then he fucking follows the your cousin I do like a quadruple take. <laughs> Lamar, you have to be catching this. Yo, so then I I took the ball, I did a layup right over right over Antoine's head. And Daphne's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And it was absolutely amazing. Were you there? Did you see that game? No, no. I no. I, I, I cheerlead for Fred's football games. Well, uh, I might stay out here and smoke a cigarette. You want one? You want to bum off me? And as you say that, all of the fucking Mr. Team stops and they turn to you and Fred goes, Hey, Lamar, smoking isn't cool. I don't <laughs> think you should smoke. And neither do my friends. And Velma says, Jinkies, Lamar. Smoking's for losers. And Daphne says, Lamar, smoking. And then Shaggy from the distance goes, Even I know smoking's not cool, Lamar. Zoinks. Yeah, then, sure, you fuck, you fucking know smoking's not cool, Shaggy. You know what you're all about. And Fred's like, and, hey, and now listen here. Language is pretty bad, too. If you gotta swear, just say what we do. Gadzooks. <laughs> God, what? And, and with, uh, with the cigarette in my mouth, too, I immediately take it out of my mouth and stick it back into my pocket. And, uh, and then Shaggy's like, well, hold on, Wooly. There's a type of smoke that ain't too bad. <laughs> we'll roll up one on the way. <laughs> That's why he invited his Canadian cousin down. <laughs> like, their weed is legal, man. <laughs> so, All right, you don't want me to smoke, I won't smoke. Let's just go in this damn wax museum and just find some guy. Hey, Lamar, now that's cool. And Fred sort of gives you a, a fucking dickish smile, which is genuine, but you hate it because I hate it. And, he begins, <laughs> and he begins, and then you all start walking to the woods. And uh, 
Shaggy and Scooby, even though they ran off into the woods first, are sort of like lagging behind. And you kind of hear them having like a dialogue, Wooly. Like you hear Shaggy talking to the dog and you fucking can swear over the rumble of thunder in the distance that you can hear it going, Rhino Raggy, Rhino Rhino ro And it sends a fucking chill up your spine because <laughs> it's a talking dog. And I just, I just keep telling myself, <clears throat> no, 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 no. Yo, should we should we bring this dog into this museum? I mean, it's like a public place. They probably don't like animals inside. Should the dog way outside? Oh, Lamar, Scooby is one of the gang. And Daphne, <laughs> who's walking next to you, says, "Yeah, Lamar, don't you like Scooby?" No, yeah, but he's a, he's a dog. I mean, he's cool like a dog. But I mean, all you gotta do is give like... him a snack. And she pulls out a large bone and she hands it to you, and. Right then, you see Shaggy and Scooby run up around Wooly, and Shaggy fucking grabs it from your hand. He's like, like, far out! And he takes a bite of the fucking dog biscuit <laughs> in front of you, and he eats it! Yeah, you guys are too fucking strange. I just walk right in. Um, so, well, you exit the woods, and you see um, a large, empty parking lot <clears throat> with maybe one or two cars in it. Uh, and on the edge of a large uh, hill, almost like a mountain, like it, it breaks down to a cliff to where the sea sits behind it. A bolt of lightning illuminates an almost mansion-like hotel. <laughs> That's right. And in the lightning, you see Holton Hotel. the The facade is uh, is ancient. It's hand sculpted. It's beautiful uh, for this sort of area of. of well, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know, guys. That's that's. Uh, it seems like kind of a a, a a a big 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 place. Like I agree with Wooly. Like I don't think we should go in. It's pretty Spooksville. And Shaggy's Yo. like, run, 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 run. We were just standing by the car, and you were saying, "Let's get out of here. We gotta get out of the rain." Could have just jumped back in the car, but you decided to come all the way this way. We're gonna go in that fuck. We're gonna go in that Godzooks <laughs> building. And as you say, and as you say, fuck. Uh, Fred's like, and then he's like, Godzooks "That's right. Building. There's nothing to be afraid of, guys. Come on." And then you're speechless because Fred then goes, th "This this gentleman who just presented himself as like going through here." then has the fucking audacity to tell Shaggy and Scooby to go first. So he goes, come on, guys, it's fine. And then he turns, he points past you, Lamar, and says, Shaggy, Scooby, you head in first. <laughs> and Shaggy's like, like, okay. And then he just fucking does it. He just <laughs> listens to him. And he walks past you, and he starts heading towards the front of the building. So I turn to Thel Velma, and I say, uh... Wow, that seems kind of bold of uh as I shake off my jacket. Seems kind of bold of uh like Fred to, you know, like have have my cousin and the dog go in first, no, when he's the one that kind of wanted to come out here. Or... Well, Fred's never steered us wrong before, she says, sort of with a weird look on her face, realizing that almost weekly they're running a gas and fuck up their car. But none of it phases me and I just look into her deep glassed eyes. <laughs> Glassed, glassed eyes, drunk eyes, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I'm just. I see, I see Wooly and Velma so clearly getting along, and I turn to Daphne, who's since gotten out of my hoodie. Yeah, and I think, man, what's my play? What am I gonna do? <laughs> and as you and... think that, she kind of looks at Fred and be like, "Good thinking, sending Shaggy first, Fred." Yo, I I just I'll, look at Lamar. And... I'll go, I'll go, I'll go even before Shaggy. I'll even go before Scooby Doo, man. I mean, I'll just and, and I just hurry along. I see Lamar do that, and I go, and I look at Velma, and I say, "Yeah," and I'll go with him, too. It'll be me and Lamar. We'll not be afraid. And Come Shaggy on. like yeah, stops. Yeah. Shaggy stops with like an audible. Uh, he's like. Well, like, all right then. And he goes back to walk behind and he fucking, like, just walks like an asshole to the back. I just have to say, if we could pause for a second, that your voice is bang on. Your bang impression. on. Can I just say? <laughs> on, 
Can I just say, and I'm not trying to, trying to be a dick about it, I didn't plan, like, I didn't plan. I was like, I'll just figure it out. I'm surprised that it does sound good, too. Yeah. Because yeah, I've yeah. never done that voice. I'm just, it's, just like, <laughs> it's like, it's inside you. It's been inside you all this time. All along. Well, no, it I was know. like, it was the same with the Arnold one, because I've done Arnold fucking, uh, uh, like before, like in one word, but like halfway through that Terminator, I was like in the fucking zone for like that Austrian accent. Like I, I felt really good about that. But anyway, thank you. That was very sweet. No problem. All right. Okay. So we're going first into the building. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, you approach the building again, the large facade, the three story building. It's an ancient hotel. Uh, the stone steps are almost dust covered, uh, but there does seem to be lights on. And as you walk in, you see an empty short hallway opening to a large lobby where a single desk with a marble countertop and the red carpet fills this area and you enter in and there doesn't seem to be anyone there so now we're in the building inside mm. yeah we're inside okay. um i wonder if there's anybody here i don't know why is nobody had to damn what am i doing it's a wax museum hello is anyone and here? I, I ring the doorbell at the counter. Yeah, yeah, I look around for a bell. Yeah. And uh, so you walk over to the counter, and as you walk across the hotel lobby, you see uh, an empty fireplace. You see uh, furniture covered with sheets. You see um, a vacant stairwell. You see the lights sort of flicker. They are on, but they're very dim. And mm. in a bolt of lightning that crashes and shakes the building, the lights dim to nothingness. And when they come back on, you see a small, balding man with glasses standing behind the desk. Hello. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, gee, shit, man. Um, um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Uh, I know that voice. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it not the like same. we've done this before. Uh, wait, no. that's, that's Yogi Bear's little partner, right? Oh, yeah, we'll go with that then. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh. He, um, so, he sounds kind of like Boo Boo. Hey, L Lamar. Uh, hey, Yogi. Um, we're we're here with our friends, and uh, we're kind of lost and out of gas. And um, as you're like talking, the mystery team walks in behind you, like, like why the fuck did they send you in first out of yeah. the rain? And uh, Fred's like, "Well, hello there," and he kind of <laughs> interrupts your fucking dialogue with this gentleman. He says. Hello, I'm Mr. Schneebly. And he extends a, a frail little hand with little wrinkles all over it, and it's pale. And um, and, and trying to kind of impress Velma, I reach my hand out and in front of Fred's, and I shake no, Mr. Schneebly's hand. No. Hi, Schneebly. Oh, the Dad, name's Wooly. Oh, that hurts so much. Oh, oh I, I'm terribly sorry. And he pulls his wow. hand back. Looking back at Velma for her. She's no. like just like fucking glad. Like she's like. <laughs> <laughs> what well, did did you hurt him? What well, was your? Are you, are very are you all right? Or... I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I just, I'm tired. Uh, are you looking so... for a room for the day? To... No, no, we don't need a room. We just need a place to wait out the rain before we, you know, walk and get some gas. Oh, um, bother! I would so love to rent you a room. Yeah, well, we we don't have any money. That's it. I don't have any money. I mean, Why are you so I got lots of money. Us a room, friend, Mister Schneebly, and he says, "Oh, hello. Uh, you look rather Aryan." And he says, <laughs> <laughs> "He says, I'm glad he didn't say what I look like." <laughs> I'm glad you're diversity. <laughs> and he says, "Um." Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I've had so few guests after the recent haunting. And haunting? And, yeah, and Velma says, w with you. She says, haunting, and she kind of looks at you and then says, jinkies. <laughs> As you think, jinkies. Uh -huh. and, and he goes, yes, the hauntings. We used to have the most popular wax museum in all the area. And he walks in what, like a little sort of sippy step. And, Almost uh, like a penguin? <laughs> just sort of like he's got like like really tight like legs. Like the skin goes down to his knees. <laughs> like attached. Like his legs don't separate till the knees. <laughs> yeah, like that. Like that. Hold on. You weren't talking. Do that again. 
like this. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, and he's wearing like a suit and stuff too, right? And he's a little comb over. He's like bald. And he's so pale. Hey, shut up, all right? And he walks over <laughs> to a series of portraits uh, and pictures, photographs that are sitting next to the lobby. He says, we were once the most popular destination for all of tourism in the greater Massachusetts area. And he points to these pictures and you see like, some fucking asshole standing next to a wax sculpture and some other fucking asshole. And, and the wax sculptures are like Frankenstein and like Dracula and the Wolfman. But ever since the recent hauntings, people don't want to stay here anymore. And he comes back to the desk. Haunting? And I say it at the same time as Velma again. We both look at each other. Yeah. And Shaggy's like, like, that's not what we had in mind when we came in here, Scoobs. <laughs> and you hear, rawr, 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 rawr. And uh, he comes back to the desk. And he's like, "Yes, I feel I might have to close our doors or sell to Mister Hyde." And Fred says, "Who's Mister Hyde, Mister Sneebly?" Well, Mister Hyde is a very generous man who offered to buy this hotel. He offered to buy it every month, and I've said no every time. But now with these hauntings, I might just need to close our doors and sell to him. And Fred and says. I this is just all him. Sorry, it's all NPCs apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, you mean Mr. Hyde, the real estate developer who's looking to tear down all old buildings in this area and build condominiums for people to live in? Yeah, the same, very same. I turn to Lamar and under my breath, I kind of say, <clears throat> do you think maybe that this, uh, this guy, the developer, has something to do with these hauntings and Mr. Schneebly just thinks the place is haunted and really it's just... What's the old guy? What's the other yeah, guy? It's like, it's like Mr. a strong arm. Mr. Schneebly. It's like Mr. Hyde is... is, is Mr. Hyde? Manipulating things to yeah. make it so that he has to close his doors. Almost. I mean, I mean that would be a very convenient explanation. If I had my money, Lamar, I would put it on, on the fact that it's probably Mr. Hyde uh, duping Mr. Schneebly into selling the place and yeah. shut it down. So but then as, again, as if just, I was... Sorry, that's what ahead. I would say. If I was Mr. Sneebly, I'd probably just sell this hellhole. I don't know why anybody would come to this place. I don't know how we made any money before the hauntings. Yeah, yeah, you know? makes sense to me. Homes. Anyways, let's hear what they have to say. I'm yeah. sure Fred will come up with this one himself. And you guys are talking, and Fred's like, well, Mr. Hyde sounds pretty nice. And you seem pretty <laughs> nice, too. <laughs> he's like, he's like, but if there's a ghost afoot, we'd happily investigate for you. We're the mystery team. And Mr. Schneebly said, oh, thank gosh. I was afraid that I would have to close my doors and sell to Mr. Hyde. And, and he, like, repeats the whole fucking plot again. And yeah. uh, you're kind of nodding along. You're sort of searching around the fucking boardroom. Give me a spot hidden. I mean, the lobby. Um, well, Okay, so if I have a 60, what am I rolling here? I don't know. Uh, so you want to get below it. And I'm rolling 100 die? 100. Yeah. D100. 100 D4s. 100 D4s. Oh, success. So, so um, you take a look around the lobby. It looks like it's been used a bit. Like, recently there has been traffic. So, there, there are po probably people not, staying here right now. It's not completely okay. vacant. Um, and based on the cars in the parking lot, we assume that that's probably the case. Yeah, exactly. Right? And as you're looking around, however, a large crash of thunder sounds and echoes. <laughs> and the lights once again dim. And you hear Velma, Jinkies! And you hear, you feel a hand grab you um, softly, Wooly. And Lamar, you also feel arms around you. And Fred says, it's okay, gang. Everyone calm down. And after a few seconds of darkness, the lights come back on. And Mr. Schneebly is nowhere to be seen. Like, hey. oh no! And you turn and Lamar, uh, Shaggy's got his arms around you. <laughs> You said it, Shaggy. Um, <clears throat> said it, Shaggy. Uh, where where did Sh Mr. Schneebly go to suddenly? And Scooby, by the way, is the one holding you, uh, Wooly. <laughs> the fucking dog. Uh, and he's like, yeah. sorry, Wooly. <laughs> and, and I turn to Lamar. <laughs> Lamar. Did you, did, the, the, the dog well, is Why is your like cousin him. hanging off of me right oh, now, man? God. Holmes, come on, man. Get off me. I don't need that one now. And uh, no, as, you, as you turn to Mr. I mean, Schneebly, you realize that there's a figure standing right behind him, and it's a wax figure, and it's it's Frankenstein who is standing where Mr. Schneebly just was. And as you look, the the figure goes and begins moving towards the counter, and just ah, as it does, oh shit! What the? F 
uh, fucking Shaggy is like, whoa, run! And he goes, the and he yeah. fucking like bolts <laughs> out of the room. Yeah, exactly. And, um, uh, I pick up a, I pick up a, a fire poker. Perfect. <laughs> just um, fucking run out. <laughs> <laughs> <Do it. laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I you, just, and I just go out. all gangster on him. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, roll, roll for, uh, roll for hitting whatever the fuck that is. Oh dang it! Or something. I'm a musician. I was hoping to be an athletic musician. You're pretty athletic. Okay. Still wearing your glasses there, Harlan. I don't know. If oh, Schneebly's fucking dead. Uh, gone. Yeah, okay. I mean, right. he's in the wax skull. I mean, who knows? Wait a minute. That's not Mr. Schneebly. That's Harlan. Wait to the twist ending. <laughs> what? All right, let's see. 64. It's a failure. Okay. So you go running at the uh, thing. And as you do, uh, unfortunately, you just you fall in a really fucking cool way because you want to impress Daphne. Right, yeah. And you do like a tumble, and the lights flick off. And uh, you feel a wet hand on your back. And when the lights come back on again, Mr. Schneebly's still missing. And the wax figure is nowhere to be seen. And you see standing in the corner, this time uh, Shaggy's holding Scooby. Uh, Fred is just fucking standing there like an asshole at, with a flashlight now. And Velma and uh, Daphne are like clichely, uh, sexistly cowering in fear. Because <laughs> that's the way they were Fair written. Enough. Sorry, guys. And you're standing there, and uh, you stand up, Lamar, and you realize that you missed with the poker, but on your hand is a wet, waxy handprint. Oh, man. Oh, yo, Fred, why don't you do that? Why don't you tackle that guy? You're on the football team. You could have helped me. For all I, I know, he poker. was trying to help us, friend, and he kind of helps you up. What are you talking about? He was going rah and coming at us. It's a monster, and we need to get to the bottom of this. Velma. Yeah, that's... Go look at Lamar and find out exactly what that handprint says. Shaggy, Scooby, we're going to send you to the Wax Museum to look around. And Daphne and I, we'll go look around this lobby here. Daphne, you sure you don't want to stay here and look at my handprint? It's pretty cool. And she's like, she's like, oh, Fred said that we'll look around the lobby. I think we should do that. Don't worry, guys. After Velma looks at your handprint, you guys will go check the rooms upstairs. That way uh, we can cover more ground and look for clues. I just want to get back in the car and drive away. We'll get some gas. Maybe they got some gas in the generator. Why we got to solve this this person's problems? Why doesn't he just <laughs> sell the place? Says Fred. <laughs> <laughs> we need to help Mr. Schneebly. We don't need to at all. We can just leave. And we can even call the police and say, hey, there's some funny business happening at this Schneebly place. And Fred and takes then, like a half step towards you and says, we're the mystery team. We solve mysteries. This yeah, is a so mystery. The, yeah. You, uh, whatever. What do, you, what do you think about my handprint, Velma? And Velma walks over to your handprint and starts looking. And she's sort of giving you the side eye, Willie. And she says, Wooly, I could use, an, I could use another set of eyes, Wooly. Oh, uh, I was hoping you'd ask me for that. And I stand kind of on the other side of Lamar's shoulder. And across Lamar's shoulder, we have oh, a bit of a moment. My love, <laughs> my darling. <laughs> it's all happening while Lamar is like right here. Yeah. He's, yeah. Like, he's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Uh, so give me an investigation oh. roll. Or I'm glad it's Velma that's behind me. Uh, should be um, a bonus, so you can me do an investigation. Yeah, now? yeah. My investigation. I don't know what that is. I don't know if I have that. Do I? Um, it's or you can do spot hidden if you want. Yeah, I'll do spot hidden. Why's your name Where Harry? Your name's Willie. Are you change, uh, changing your name. Inti intimidation is investigations on this. Maybe not. Under the know, skills. I don't have the sheets. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just uh, picturing. Running at that uh, Frankenstein monster, I'm just picturing there's this meme from like years ago of this 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 black kid. He's walking by a um, a big like oh yeah, right, and he yeah. punches it <laughs> like the, a monster jumps and he just punches it right in the face. That's always yeah. fucking good. Yeah. I love that. Uh, okay, so seventy, I failed anyways. So. Okay, um, yeah. So unfortunately, you can't quite tell anything, Lamar. In the meantime, why don't you give me a spot hidden for the lobby as well? And and Velma's sort of pouring over the uh, the hand. Well, 
just while we're doing this, what do, what do these numbers mean besides? So my spot hidden is 60, but then it's nice. 30 over 12. That just means you have a hard success or a critical success. So it's it's varying degrees of how well you succeed. So if I hit a 30 or a would, 12? It would be a hard success, and if you got a 12, it would be extreme success. Speaking okay. of hard successes or critical success, I got a 3. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so as you're sort of bent over, you notice a thick pair of glasses uh sitting not the ones that Schneebly was wearing mind you but a thick pair of glasses sitting just behind the desk where the uh creature attacked you from so mm. he's not wearing his glasses anymore Do you no it's not mr S it's not mr Schneebly's glasses look they're different they look they look like this that's right and you walk over and you pick them up and uh, Velma says uh, jinkies good spot Lamar and Fred goes, well Thanks, done, uh, buddy. And he walks over and says, well, what do you make of these? And Velma takes them from your hand. She says, huh, I'll have to run a few tests on these, but I think this could help us find who the real culprit is. What kind of tests? Are you going to do like fingerprint scans? I'll or, go to the uh, library. Library? Why don't we just go to the gas station? To the library. And she starts walking away. I'll follow her to the library, Lamar. And, and, and Fred puts a hand on your chest and says, Gay, we need to split up and look for clues to find out to the bottom of this mystery. Shaggy, uh, or he says, uh, Wooly, Lamar, you guys check the rooms. Take some of the keys and see if there are any people here. Maybe they saw something. Daphne and I will check <sighs> the lobby. Velma, you go check out where those glasses came from. And Shaggy and Scooby, and Shaggy's like, yeah, like, can we go back to the van? <laughs> Fred, Fred says, so no, you guys go to the haunted wax museum by yourselves <laughs> and take a look around. Like, that's the scariest place. No, no, man. Why don't we put it to a vote? I mean, like, he wants to go back to the van. I want to go back to the van. Why don't we do, like, this yeah, diplomacy you know, thing? Like, Lamar's got like, a good idea. And as he says I that, just, Fred like, takes a half step towards... Uh, fucking shaggy he's like he's gonna lose it <laughs> i love fred <laughs> no shaggy you and scooby will go to the haunted wax museum daphne and i will look in the lobby and Wooly and lamar will go upstairs and check the rooms we're the mystery don't make team. me repeat myself <laughs> yeah all right well you want me to bust behind this counter and grab some keys and check private rooms that's, yeah. that's what you're saying right Yo, Lamar, we can do this. Look, we'll just knock on every door before we go in, make sure there's nobody there. We might even find some cool stuff. You never know. I mean, cool these old... stuff. Yeah. We're not going to steal nothing. Odd, valuable securities. Maybe some, I don't know, antiques. You never know. Yo, man, I don't know who raised you, but I don't steal. I don't well, do I, any of that I, shit. I, I'm just saying... And and if the oh, cops fine. come, you and I both know that I'm gonna be the one taking a rap for it. Well, all right. Fine. You know what? Fair. You know what? Jinkies okay. this. Jinkies it. Let's just do it. No stealing. I promise. No stealing. No stealing. Okay. okay. Right. Fine. Let's just fine. check the rooms. But if the cops you... comes, I'm out the window. Fine. If anyone could find any clues, you let us know. Remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Fred... mystery team solves every investigation. Damn it, Fred. Yes. All right. We get it. Yes, mystery team. God damn it. And Congrats. Scooby I mean, looks at you and goes, Ruh roll. <laughs> <laughs> and Grab Shaggy and Scooby descend the stairs. You already hear like the groans and moans and like, whoa, like we got to hide in this barrel. And like you already hear all the fucking hijinks <laughs> as they walk away. And as you two descend the steps, you see the scenes playing out with Velma and Fred and Daphne and like intricate conversations about Mr. Hyde growing up in England or something like that. And it just sort of fades to nonsense as you enter the top steps. And you're approached, it's a beautiful mahogany wood wall uh, oh, walkway. Doors on either side, it's an ancient building, and it's actually quite nice. Um, but it's dark. But it's dimly dark, lit. and there's like dimly lit, and uh, yeah. Okay. So I walk up to the first door, and uh, I kind of do a. And it seems vacant. But as you're at that door knocking, you hear like a th 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 um, a few doors down on that same side. Did you hear that, Lamar? Yeah, I heard that. Some sort of thumping. Do you have any weapons on you? I, I got if this. somebody actually uh, attacked. 
Well, I got a fire poker. There's a little shovel down there, but I don't think it'll be really helpful. I can use this uh, if we need to put someone out. Maybe that mm. wax monster, that that wax sculpture. Let's just check yeah. it out. Do I have any weapons on me? Yeah, dude, you can have whatever you want. I don't give a shit. Okay, I have uh... anything. A high school. I got a, I have a. I have a. I have a switchblade. Sure. Yeah, switchblade. Switch oh, I also got. I also got this, and I pull out a Glock. Yeah. I made it to a... <laughs> <laughs> You're a high school student. That yeah, that's true. That's fair. Um, so yeah, you you the begin walking madness. down the hallway as there's a large bay window at the end of this hallway and you see the water the rain peppering the glass beyond that you see the sea the ocean front washing loudly against the beach miles below or far below i should say not miles the lighthouse in the distance on a pier sort of illuminates the the rain on the window every once in a while and as you descend this hallway an eerie feeling of actual fear begins creeping over you not this mr schneebly not the hijinks of the people that you're with but something about this hallway something about the door you approach feels sinister and heavy and with a a thick weight at the back of your tongue you begin towards the door uh yeah <clears throat> yeah um lamar hmm. um i got i gotta admit it's it's kind of creepy up here now that now that all the sound has died down yeah um, my yeah. hands are visibly shaking with the uh with the fire poker yeah i hadn't noticed i pull out my switchblade as well um let's just you know whatever we do let's stick together because this is kind of i i don't know what to expect here so what it, what do we where do we think the sound is coming from from the door at the end yeah so it sounds like no it sounds like now at uh room 206 it sounds like there is a uh, movement in this room, but it sounds something odd, like like someone's like tossing the room almost. Hmm. So, what do you think, Lamar? Should we knock or just go straight in? No, man, we gotta knock. We gotta knock on this because th there might be two people in there, you know, doing their thing, yeah. and we gotta just. All right. That's that's probably what it is. Why would it be so, anything? Why would it be anything else? And for I a know, few moments, right? you, you, you realize just for the past few seconds that the thumping has stopped. And as you're standing before the door, debating what to do, it swings open. And standing before you is a man. His face pale and strict with fear. His eyes wide, and he breathes heavily. And he looks over the two of you, and he says, "I need your help. I need anyone's help, please." Uh, I kind of. With my blade up, I kind of start to let it lower it. What, what do you need our help with? Come inside, please, please. And he waves you into the room, and you see, from the room, you see a lamp tipped over, light casting an obtuse shadow on the wall. You see blankets and things strewn oh. about. You see that this man is, is sweaty and tired. And he's what the hell are you doing in here? <sighs> trying to trying to keep saying, come, come in, please. Yeah, yeah, let's close the door behind me. And he, he slides the lock over it. And he walks over to the large area of the room. He begins pacing back and forth. Something about this man is so unlike everyone else you've seen tonight. His hand shakes slightly, and he walks back and forth. And after a deep breath, he says, I heard you in the lobby. I heard you and your friends wishing to help Mr. Schneebly with his small problem. Are you, are you Mr. Hyde? No, no, God, no, no, no. I have real issues. What's your name? My name... You know. My name is Francis Wayland Thurston. Listen. And he points to the bed. He says, take, take, take a seat, please, please, please. And he begins pacing by the window, and you see lightning outside in the in the in the darkening sky. He sort of turns to face it as the rain splashes on it in the, the waterfront miles below or again far below, and he turns around. A year ago, I found notes left behind by my grand uncle. Uh, Brown University linguistic professor George Gamel Angle after his unfortunate death among the notes I found this and he turns and he points to the desk and sitting on top of the desk is a small sculpture it's like a scaly looking creature it looks like an octopus or a dragon it's it's also almost human in the way it's depicted and it sits there in, in, in bronze bust small 
and he looks at it with wide eyes and almost fearfully. When Is it alive? I, no, it's just a sculpture. Okay, sculpture, sorry. I tracked the person who made this, a, a Rhode Island student named Henry Anthony Wilcox, who, who based this work on a delirious dream he had, a great cyclopean city of titan blocks and sky-flung monoliths. He spoke of a creature, a creature named Cthulhu, a, a being of great immense power, as well as the lost city he dwells in, or lay. And the, for, for a time I, I put the thought from my mind, and then I found this article. And he points to the wall, and for the first time in the darkening sky, you see that the, the wall is filled with newspaper articles. One he points at from an Australian newspaper. It, 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 it details the discovery of a, of a derelict ship, the Emma, which, which washed up on shore in, in Australia. It, it seems that a second mate, Gustav Johansson, was a sole survivor. So I flew down there, and I spoke with him, and revealed to me that the Emma was attacked by a heavily armed yacht named the Alert. The crewmen of the Emma killed those aboard the Alert, but they lost their own ship in the battle and commandeered the Alert. And sailing her, they discovered an uncharted island in the vicinity of the coordinates. And he points to a set of coordinates, 47, Jesus. Ought 9, south, 126, 47, west. <clears throat> With the exception of Johansson and another man, the remaining crew died on that island. But he didn't say how when I asked him. And he sort of turns towards you and looks towards the sculpture, again depicting this monstrous beast. I believe these coordinates lay home to the lost city of Relay. I believe this to be where the creature dwells, a creature of great power, great evil, and deep ancient monstrosity, hell-bent on destroying the world. And what's more, the creature has followers, cultists that wish to do its bidding. When I discovered this when I followed up with Johansson. I took the ship, the alert. I went in search of this isle. I found it. And what I found there I carry with me every day. It weighs heavily on my soul. They seek me now. And he walks to the window and he looks down to the beachfront. And you, you, sort of searching down you see in a flash of lightning a large heavily armed ship beached far down the ocean. I sailed the alert here and I hid in this hotel but they seek me. Not only the cultists, but the creatures. Cthulhu holds domain over. They come from the seas, and they wish to end me. I Jesus. need a way back. I need a way out. I need a way to solve this. And he turns to you, and he gets on his knees. And for the first time, you see his fingernails long and caked with blood. Like he's dug holes with his fingernails. His knees are... The holes in his jeans have been, or in his pants, have been completely ripped from dragging on his knees over time. And he comes towards the two of you, and on his knees grabs the two of your legs and looks at you. His eyes are wild and dark, deep circles around them. I need your help. This is only one of two statues. The second one lies in that ship down there in the alert. But if I would go, the creatures of the sea would drag me and disembowel me and take me back to their leader, to the home of Relay. I cannot go back. I need that statue. I need the two of you to go help it. Otherwise, this entire hotel, this entire city, the entire world will fall domain to the creature that lies in wait in the sea, the creature that waits for me, the creature that wants my flesh and bones, aches for the flesh of all of us. They will come unless I can unite the statues, the one that lies in this ship and the one that lies on that desk. You must help me. You must. And the camera spins around to the two of you sitting on the edge of the bed. And from the hallway, you hear, That's right, Scoob. Let's go look in the wax museum. And we're going to stop there for the mix game post. <laughs> Jeez. I love the mix. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I love it's it. It's time for the mid game post. That is the time of the game or the show or whatever the fuck this is where we jump. Uh, jump to the Facebook group and we're going to ask you a question about tonight's game or maybe just Scooby Doo trivia in general. And uh, to see uh, if we can reward a little bit XP. <laughs> Everybody liking the game so far? <laughs> Woo! Yeah. <That's> yeah. <laughs> it's a laugh. <laughs> oh. It's a weird and a little bit creepy. Well written. I'm enjoying the part with the actual Cthulhu. <laughs> that's, that's like the, the mashing of the two worlds. All right. The question. Um, Mid-game post. What should be... The question. Uh, there's probably a few. We could do like Scooby Doo trivia, but that's tough. 
Why don't do? Why don't we do two parts? One part trivia. One, one part Scooby Doo trivia. Next, the other part, what's going on in so the two game? Two questions. No more one that can be answered by both. How about? That's tough. How about? No, we'll do of the game. Uh, yeah. What was the name of the hotel? Because I said it twice. The ho- of the hotel. Yeah. Wax museum. It's just a hotel, and it's got a haunted wax museum because I wanted something terribly cliche that <laughs> poor fucking Scooby was like, <laughs> like always thrust towards, which is my favorite fucking part of the show, by the way. When like Fred's like, "We'll go look in this really safe place. You go look in this really safe place, and Scooby and Shaggy, you go check out the fucking freakiest part of this entire adventure by yourselves." <laughs> <laughs> it's like so good. I love how much of an asshole he is, and like he no is a one total cares. asshole. Total He's so asshole. good, but yeah. it's funny, and I love the way you're playing it, being like just the basic question, being like, "Yo, why the fuck are you doing this?" <laughs> He's like, yeah. Because I fucking said so. Yeah, it'd be really funny to see these people in like thirty. It's like years. a psycho psychological profile on him. Yeah. <laughs> is everybody having a good time out there? You guys wanted this, so I hope this is. Woo! Yeah, who we got uh, out there? We got, got Zia, everybody. we got Godpool, we got Mike and Brianna, Blue Knight. Who's Gilodin? Gilodin. I don't know. Who's Gilodin? No. Tell us who you are. Is his 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 profile picture is a character from Final Fantasy six. Is it four? I think or one. One I, of the Final Fantasies. I don't know. I, I never played any of them. Oh, they're great. Are they? I know you seven, love the music. Eight. Seven, eight, and nine are great. Well, I think that's partly why I love them so much. Oh, just the mix of, I don't know, the stories. If I were to try to summarize any of the stories, I don't think any of them would make sense. Yeah. Kind of like if you were to try to, you know, summarize an episode of, um, I don't know, Rick and Morty or, you know, some yeah, show. Sort of just, tough. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But uh, I love it. I, I love that show, that game. Well, I should play it then. I'll give it, a, I would give it a fair chance. There's a lot of games that I haven't really given a chance just because I haven't. Um, uh, yeah, James. old classics. James Wright. Oh, James. Yes, he won uh, MGP last week. Oh, that's right. Close. He's relatively yeah. new. MVP. Hey, James. Yeah, you did yeah, win. Yeah. I think I actually asked you. I, I apologize. I forgot. Mm. And it's FF11. Fun fact. Um, apparently, uh, well, I know Casey Kasem is the voice of, Sh- of Sco- uh, Shaggy, which was interesting. Huh. But I didn't know this. In the movie um, Scooby Doo, Matthew Lillard d- plays Shaggy. Yeah, he's also been doing the voice of Shaggy for like the last few years in like a bunch oh, of no movies way. and TV. Yeah, they know that. A very good friend told me that. It's just interesting because <laughs> like it's kind of cool to uh, if you were playing him in the movie and then you get to actually play him in real life too. Only one answer on the mid game post so far, guys. I said it twice, and that's not even the right answer. <laughs> so you guys, they're frantically <laughs> rewinding. Uh, wait, does Wooly get Velma? Who knows. Only Clearly, this week on the Invictus stream, Scooby Doo Call of Cthulhu. Scooby Dooby Doo Call of Cthulhu. God, that's we a got some real to. I wanted to get really fucking real like that, but I also kind of want to see what Scooby Scoob's doing in the wax museum. That sounds really fun. <laughs> yeah. Did he say this is a beautiful drinking cup, or was he just being facetious? I can't tell. Who? Uh, Rain, uh, Rain of Peace. So oh, yeah, that a, is. God, that's a beautiful drinking cup. I don't think that's being... Is it being sincere? I don't think that's being sarcastic. You don't think it's being sarcastic? This is my it favorite is, drinking It cup. is a beautiful drinking cup. They're it's both just, you know what it is? It's a cup. David T. mug. That's like... Oh, okay. It's a David's T. mug um, that is purposely marketed so that you draw on it. Uh-huh. Like that's why it's... And then I got it, and I, I was like, nope. I like I just kind of love the simplicity of it. I'm mm. big on like simplicity, like just like a black fucking mug like this. Simplicity. You can uh, tell by my really fucking busy background. Yes, exactly. You need you need simplicity in some aspects of life and then you need super complexity fucking filled to the brim with everything. Exactly. Like and stripes on your shirt. Like stripes. Oh, on your shirt. Don't ask me what I was going for. Uh, it sounded like it was more fantastic. Which, by the way, I liked how it. fucking great is Jagged Little Pill as, of an album? Like so oh, good, such a good, like so good. There's like Jagged I'm not crazy about track three, little. to be honest. Cause I'm here. Oh to yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind you. Well, we got you want to know, which is of fucking, a mess you left. 
when you went away. We got hand in my pocket. I got one hand in my pocket. pocket. Then we got. Then we got you learn. You laugh. You laugh. You learn. You learn. Then we you got kill. You learn. Then we got ironic. For those who and don't then, know what we're and talking then all about, I really, all I really want is a sun dun dun on da na 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 na. And then head over feet. I had to hear you something, something. Ding, ding. And there's something. another couple on there. Was it called Right to Something? The, the only one I'm not crazy about is track three. Perfect. Don't really like that one. And nine, Mary Jane. I'm not crazy about that one either. But that's like five solid hits. That's like six solid hits. All I really want, you ought to know, is so fucking good, though. Right? Uh, I, I, I gotta. Want you, yeah. you to I gotta know. listen to the lyrics again. I feel like I'm. I never listened to lyrics, and just like within the past like couple oh, of years, so I've started listening to lyrics of bands and musicians. Mm. Like tragically, hip is one that yeah. I didn't like until I started listening to the lyrics. Yeah. Uh, so I gotta listen to Alanis because I feel like oh, she's probably. Fucking, you ought oh, to know is so such awesome. a great fuck you song. Did you forget about me, Mister Do? <laughs> right through you is another good one. Um, what's the fucking line in that where it's really good? Are you like, are you thinking of me while you fuck her? Which is like such yeah. a like, that is it angry fucking amazing. And line. when she go down on you in the theater, in the theater. In the theater. In the theater. Oh, it's such every a time song. I think about that, I'm like, oh, that'd be nice. low job in the theater would be nice. <laughs> well, it depends on what you're watching. <laughs> if you're watching a horror movie, <laughs> I'm going to see Star Wars with Kyle next week. Oh wait, that doesn't work. <laughs> Are you going to see it next week with Kyle? Yeah, man. Oh, nice. I should On come. the 15th. Yeah. I need to oh, go see it. Oh, I'll buy you an extra ticket because... No, <gasps> don't worry about it yet. It's near my work. You know what? Ah. I'm actually okay because the theater in Whippy, they do assigned seating now, always. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit next to somebody, so it's perfect. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's like, they do it at Sil Silver City in Fairview. Uh, You're not facetious. Too, Justin, I really you? like it. Exactly. That black matte finish is very nice. Thank you. You're not? Yeah. Thanks, Paul. I love Crate and Barrel great album great album says paul i was not aware this is going to be a musical if they Alrighty. don't sing are they really sing um do we have enough answers to uh, move along probably well, it's okay because like there's not much playing in this game so it's okay to, to do as long as you want justin's got to eat anyway poor guy yum you uh, can't do that on television you're absolutely right john you can't say cocksucker Motherfucker! Holy shit! Where's the title? <laughs> what are you? I watched about? that the other day. Um, <laughs> okay, so John said the Notel Motel. Nope. The Continental. Nope. Holton Hotel is correct. As is Megan Don's answer. Holton Hotel. Holden Hotel. Featuring the haunted wax museum. That was actually the most correct. Because I also said featuring the haunted wax museum. Sergeant Murray Gilman. How? House. I don't even I'm not know sure. what that is. Ho, -ho, I don't know. Ho House? The Sergeant Murray Gilman? Ho -ho. Dustin, by the way, is uh, like works at Chaosium. So Call of Cthulhu, every time we play it, he's like the guy to judge how terrible we are. And actually, I think he was the one that suggested Scooby-Doo in the Call of Cthulhu. So there you go. Mm. For anyone who didn't know, if you've never read the Call of Cthulhu, basically what this character just explained is the verbatim plot of Call of Cthulhu. Minus a subsection about a Louisiana police chief, but it wasn't really necessary. Hmm. So we got two answers. We got Godpool and Megan. Let's roll. So let's roll it. What did D six? Uh, D four, and we'll half it. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we can half really any of them. Just do D one hundred. Get up on me, Mister Do Placente. Godpool, you Again. win. King of the roll. You keep on winning the roll, Godpool. Um, so well done, buddy. You won the no. ball. <laughs> what was that? Nice, <laughs> nice one. I would, I would have done the cricket sound. There you go. <laughs> I would have done the cricket sound. You keep on winning the roll, God Paul. No, oh. he was up against someone else last week. He always wins because he's great. Um, there, I wanted to do a quick shout out to a good friend, uh, Mr. Jason Jordan Brezzi, uh, for sending me something that I had shipped to the states, but also. For throwing in this super cute little Call of Cthulhu dice Aww. bag. Aww. Isn't this nice? Is that for Henry? Oh, it's actually D&D. &D. Sorry, it's a Mind Flayer. Ooh, I should have known that. I didn't know that. I didn't even check. No, it's not for fucking 
Harry's for me. No, I, I, I it'll be for his first <laughs> dice, for her, his first dice stream or dice, uh, whatever he's got. But it's a little dice bag. You unzip the back. Oh, I see. And you put your dice in there. I think I didn't actually read the tag. I didn't know it was a mind flare. So uh, <laughs> game it's not pouch. a dice thing. Either. What is it? Uh, comfy pouch, size to fit Ultra Pro dice or other small accessories. Ah, perfect. Or like other a small soother. accessories. You do what you want to do. Like a soother. Yeah. <laughs> Like a soother. Hello, welcome to the party. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? It is kind of cute. It is kind of cute. And it's nice and purple. It's like, you know, cute. Um, so thank you, buddy. I appreciate that very much. Uh, although, let me just make sure. Did I do, did I mix your names? I always, no, Jason Jordan. I did say it. Whenever I whenever I think Jason Jordan, I always confuse and sometimes say Jordan Jason. But I'm 90 or my, Michael Jordan. Or Michael Jordan, because you're so... Uh, Similar and cool. Basketball players. Uh, Miles. Oh, Miles that's players so here. bad. What's bad? Huh? What's bad? My jokes. No, they're fine. Moving on. Yeah, he's back now, so we can continue on the game. No, he's still muted. He's like giving me the one minute. He's like, yeah, yo, I'm trucking, oh. fucking trying to eat. Yeah. <laughs> right, fine. Um, there's nothing else we can talk about in the meantime. No, you guys can start the game, but I'll just yeah. be really quiet. Lamar is going to be like... So Lamar stands up nah. and walks to the fridge and grabs something out of it. Some curry, <laughs> come some curry chicken and rice. Just work it into the story, and then you're fine. I had curry for okay, dinner. all right, I got to work it in. Yeah. Wow, that smells really good, Lamar. What is that, curry chicken? Yeah, man. Uh, curry chicken from Vindu's. Vindu's curry chicken. It's uh, It's delicious. You telling me you had that in the car ride the entire time and you didn't bother pulling it out and sharing with us? Well, I didn't have a microwave until I got to this guy's place. He was doing his yes. monologue and I had time to that's, heat it up. That's not a <laughs> microwave. That's a portal to another dimension. Well, another what? dimensional galaxy. Intergalactic planetary. Well, I turned to Lamar and while the guy is like the sitting Okay, quietly. hold on. Let's go back into the game because there was a tone I was trying to get. Let's go back to that. There's that tone. So the man before you, Francis, stands up and sort of brushes himself off. His eyes still wild. So if we don't bring these two statues back together, I fear that there's little we can do to stop his coming. And he looks out his window towards the ocean. Um... Well, I have to be honest with you, Mr. Francis. Um, what you're telling me is quite frightening. And the people that we have here might be either your greatest benefit to helping you or the worst possible idea ever. But... I think it's probably better if we if we get these guys involved because they seem to have done this before where they're solving mysteries. Yeah, we man. To, we convinced them to do it because they, they know what they're doing. And yeah. I don't personally, this sounds a little too intense for me. Uh, I don't know. I just, I feel like this might be a job for the mystery team, right? right don't you think, Wooly? Yeah. We should talk, sure. to, should talk about, to Fred about this. So, uh, what was what did you say your name was? Francis. This is Francis. Francis Thurston. Please. Francis is this. Francis. Is Anything is about there... going to the police about this this cult? You I mean, like, I, I can't call the police. This isn't this isn't something you come to them with. We're talking about ancient, yeah, powerful yeah. evil, something that yeah. lurks within the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. Yeah, I know that, but you you and just he seem to the be statue. This creature here, this one. It's fucking, look at it, it's spooky. Do you have this statue with you? Me? No, but it basically looks like, well, not a Mind Flayer. Is I, it the, oh, one I, I, the one I got you? It is downstairs. I'm sorry. <laughs> it does you, look uh, like that. Break. You should have gone to get it. It does look like that. Um, you, uh, I mean, you, you just seem to be putting a lot of faith in strangers you literally met, you know, three minutes ago. I have no other solution. The minute tell, I set tell me, foot Francis. outside this room... The minute I set foot outside this room, I I will be hunted, killed, and 
creatures tearing at my innards, waiting to consume my flesh. I have angered a great many people, the cultists that seek me, the ghouls that rise from the ocean depths. They all seek me. I cannot leave. Is there um, a, is there any sort of passageway down to the boat that would be easily accessible from inside the building? <sighs> Let me just turn up my microphone. As it's a bit quiet, apparently. Yes, much better. I'll even go louder, because I like to be the loudest. <laughs> That's better. Now I can whisper as Francis. Um, listen, there is a path out the back of the hotel. You can take it. It's a thin stone path towards the beach. The alert is sitting. Maybe... 500 meters, 1,000 meters from the stone steps that will lead you to the beach. In the alert, it's a heavily armed vessel. Many people died on it. Be weary. I wasn't sure they were all dead when I left. In a small cabinet, in the captain's quarters, there's a, a lock and key that hangs around a, a, a key in the bathroom. If you remove that, unlock it, you'll see the statuette. That statuette you must bring it back to me. When I have both statuettes, I can recite an incantation and stop Cthulhu's coming. Hmm. All right, Francis. Um, I suppose we will let the others know and... Only I let them really know if you can see... trust them. These cultists are everywhere. I don't really know if I want to do this, to be honest with you. You must! And he grabs you and he says, Don't you understand? This isn't just my life. This isn't just your life. This is the fate of the world. Well, that's understand. kind of like a little bit... Uh, <coughs> it's a little bit... I, 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 I'm trying to. I'm trying to. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Guys, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk to Fred. We'll... Fred... If there's anybody you could trust to solve a mystery, or at least try to solve a mystery and do everything in his power to make sure that he's, you know, not going to go against the back of the employer, then I think it's Fred. We should just talk to Fred. He won't be able to keep his hands off this. Do whatever you feel is necessary, but you must understand the severity of what we're dealing with here. Yeah, very severe. All right, you ready? Not just Will me. We? I think maybe we shouldn't tell Fred just yet. Let's try and uh, attempt to get the statue. Well, maybe tell him that we haven't found anything up here. Well, cause what I'm thinking is that this this Francis guy is absolutely off his rocker, and we get Fred to go check it out, and we just get to chill here. You could be very right. Um, maybe we convince Daphne and Velma to chill with us. I mean, <laughs> it's just a thought, you know. I like where you're going with this, Lamar. Suddenly, I'm whatever was concerning me before is now left thinking about Velma again. Whatever the case, you must get the statue. You must get it quickly. The statues coming together will stop Cthulhu from rising and and attacking, but it won't stop the creatures from the sea. And he turns toward the, the glass to the window, and he puts his hand up on it and says, It won't stop the creatures from the sea. <laughs> and at that, I back out of the room, and I kind of grab Lamar's shirt, and I also <laughs> pull him with me. And we slowly close the door behind us. The creatures from the sea. And as you're walking um, out, he's starting to strip. The creatures from the sea. <laughs> I think that guy... That guy may have some problems. Um, uh, no, he can't hear me right now. This is an aside. Yeah, There's we're no out in the hallway. Aside, the creatures from the sea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> stop! <laughs> Please. No, no, you can't stop it. You can't stop Cthulhu! <laughs> is that Cthulhu uh, in this game? I'm Cthulhu. Hello, I'm Cthulhu. Right. Um... um all right. Well, we make our way back downstairs, and is anybody else 
Is anybody else in the, f- the foyer? Yeah, so like there's been a whole bunch of nonsense apparently while you've been doing this. And as, as uh, uh, everyone's back in the lobby actually, and Brad is Brad. <laughs> Yo, where's Brad here? Where's Brad? Who the fuck invited Brad? You're all, you're all football buddy. But isn't isn't Brad and Fred really interchangeable? I mean, come on, they're all yes. the same. Brad and Freds of the worlds, and Johns. Um, oh, just kidding, John. Uh, I don't think we have any Brads on the stream. Anyway, um, <laughs> Fred is 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 currently like barking orders in Fred in a Fred way. Velma, grab this. I'm tying it here. And they're they're erecting a really bizarre convoluted trap. And what it looks to you is there's a piece of a large piece of cake in the center of the lobby on a silver plate and a large metal basket uh, attached to a very thin <laughs> wire hanging from what was once the chandelier stringing <laughs> to behind the doorway and and there's there's feathers all around the floor and there's a bucket of tar <laughs> beneath the uh <laughs> beneath the large clock above the fireplace and uh shaggy is dressed like a uh a dog as well and scooby's dressed like a human and they're staying there and shaggy's like like fred this is gonna be the best plan yet and velma's like I don't know, Fred. I don't know if this trap is going to work. Don't worry, Velma. This one's going to be my best yet. There's no way it can fail. We just have to lure the wax creature up here through this. And he starts pointing at things. And you guys kind of descend the steps as he's sort of prattling on. And Daphne's like wide-eyed and doe-eyed and staring. And Velma's like nodding along despite the the total wrong Non-sensibility definitions of, yeah. of everything he's using. And Shag and Scooby are like trying to amp themselves up for leading the creature from the basement and you guys um, the lobby. and fred stops he's like guys did you find any other clues i think we have enough to understand exactly who we're up against uh oh yeah man. <clears throat> yeah we've we found a clue uh there's a, there's a ship on the beach and there's a clue in it uh, yeah we gotta get it yeah of course and i clue into what lamar is saying and i say yeah yeah in fact there was a guest upstairs that said that the wax monster uh wants this particular idol from the boat that's on the beach down below on shore and it's a clue but we can't but we can't get it because we're not we're not manly enough not skilled enough that's not skilled we need a trap we need a really good trap (laughs) yeah it's all right guys don't fret Let me tell you something. The mystery team works best when they follow (laughs) orders. You guys go down to the beach and retrieve the clue. We're going to capture the fake right now and expose him for the fraud he truly is. And I was like, that's right, guys. Fred deduced smartly that actually the wax creature isn't a creature come to life, but probably someone dressed up trying to get people out of here. We don't know why yet. (laughs) <laughs> maybe mr hyde yeah it and could they be also like, just like look that... like they like they don't understand that like piecing it together like all right you know what <laughs> you know hi, hi, it, hi. Fred. Let's I, just... I almost want to try and eat the piece of cake you mean schneebly <laughs> no, no 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 yeah let's just okay you know what yeah let's just do it ourselves hyde was mentioned so yeah. long ago why would maybe you think we'll that? that and they're sort of like tomorrow. trying to figure out how you come up with that doesn't maybe, matter. You're right. It's probably maybe we situation. can, maybe we can enlist Velma and Daphne to help us or go with us. Yeah, we need help getting this clue. It needs at we least need four people, two of which company. should be women. And uh, yeah, Fred's like, two women. All right, guys, I get where you're coming from, and you're right. We don't need everyone here. Shag and Scooby, you follow <laughs> them. <laughs> and Shag's like, All right, man, like, oh. zoinks, and the, and then they're like. <laughs> And they walk out of the room dressed again. Great. Well, they stripped their costumes, so they're back in the. I room. look at I look at Lamar. Me we and Velma and Daphne dog. will catch this guy. Don't worry. Oh. Why, why did you do that? All right. The let's talking see. dog in this and my cousin. So <sighs> your cousin is like walking towards the back door, and he's like, "So, like, are you guys saying there's a clue in the boat on the water? How'd you find that? Like, 
Yo, man, there's no clue on the boat. It's a totally different mission. What? Like, that's totally crazy. And so yeah. He's, like, rrr, 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 rrr. he's just a regular dog because he's talking to Lamar right now, apparently. It might be, it might be, it might be totally, you know, ridiculous. Worst case, we just get to spend some chill time on the beach. But also worst case is if this guy's actually legit, then there's some serious shit going down on the beach. We got to figure that shit out. Yeah. Look, Shaggy. you don't mean there's a g -g 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 ghost? Uh -huh. And Shaggy, like quietly at the back, or Scooby, he's like, "The ghost!" And he jumps again into fucking Shaggy's arms, totally Yo, halting the process. How long have you guys been in this mystery team? The oh, two of you. Um, well, you know, when we joined high school, Fred sort of picked us up in his van one day. And yeah, that was yeah. the end of it. They haven't well, left since. But you've been on like, but you've been on adventures like every weekend for the entire time you've been in it. Pretty much, yeah. At, Me and not, Scoob. At at one point, at any point during this entire campaign of you being a member of the the, the mystery team, did you ever uh, feel that you don't need to be scared anymore of ghosts? Like, like, let me tell you something, Lamar. I'll level with you because you and Wooly are so close and I love Wooly. I'm so fucking high all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I paranoid beyond belief. I knew it. <laughs> Yo, man, what about your dog, man? This is a hound. Dog. I'm this high hunting. too. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hunting dog. Don't be afraid. Look. Yeah, Wooly. You are lucky that you are just constantly baked out of your mind. Because what I'm about to tell you is much more scary than ghosts. Like, lay it on me. I'm... There is a interdimensional demon on an island that's after whoever's upstairs in this haunted hotel. And we have to go on board this ship and... Uh, you know, yeah. Just in the bare claws of 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 whatever sea monsters are trying to get at us, and you know what? I can't do it. Lamar is. We have no experience, but you and Scooby, yeah, have lots of experience. I think lots. you guys should go in, yeah, and grab should, it. You should. You know what? You I'm, not lying to you. I'm just telling you exactly what you could expect, and yeah. I think you could do it. Yeah, you could do it, Shaggy. What do you think, yeah, Scoob? Scoob? And he looks down at the dog, and the dog's like, Burr. and he's like, all right, we're in. <laughs> and they walk through the back door, and it opens to a windy, rain-soaked um, set of stone, stone steps that are leading down to a large beach front. And at the, at the end of the steps with the beach, there's a, a long, jutting uh, a wooden walkway out to the sea. And maybe a fair distance down, uh, you do see the silhouette against the moon. Well, now it's sort of lightning lit sky. You do see the silhouette <laughs> of a ship in the distance. Like, well, is there... that the ship? Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the ship there. That's the, the alert. Yeah. I'm so going to you... need to roll for sanity. And he pulls out a big fucking blunt. And he's like, Ooh! and he walks around the corner. <laughs> and you just see like billowing smoke fucking come out and the two of you just wait and when he comes out the cloud like hangs around his head like I'm ready let's go <laughs> do it Shaggy do it man oh, and, uh, you got this we, we escort him there we get him close to the shit? boat <laughs> yeah man yeah so the three of you get high and uh, you walk down the stone steps towards the beach <laughs> um and uh as you get to the beach uh it's it's definitely eerie without fred to constantly sort of weirdly make everything that's scary okay you do start feeling a bit uncomfortable at approaching this terribly um ominous uh, ship and shaggy starts walking like an asshole with his like shoulders hanging low and scooby's sort of like <laughs> popping along and, and Lamar you're next to uh, Shaggy just yeah. reeking of weed and uh, Wooly you're looking yeah. down at, at Scooby and he's like up at you and he's like Rory are you scared too? 
and I and meanwhile I'm walking and I'm holding the last bit of whatever we were smoking and I'm just looking at it and looking back at Scooby and going Lamar the dog is talking again <laughs> and I toss it into the ocean okay. yeah man oh. dog's been talking a whole night <laughs> oh that's what I've been saying the dog talks man yeah, man. You my dog, man. You my dog. <laughs> no. The dog. <laughs> yeah, you the dog. So what? We get to alert? Um, um, not yet. So so okay. you're walking along and uh, Scoob, uh, Shaggy, who's starting to get inquisitive about actually what's on this fucking boat, hangs back a bit. And he's like, like, what were you saying is on this ship? There's this artifact, man. This this artifact that came from all the way across on this island or something, and we gotta it, get it. Yeah, it's just a and, small uh, statue, you interdimensional know, it's really, statue. It's not that big of a deal. There's like just also a bunch of dead bodies. Yo, and maybe some sea yeah. demons that might come out. After yeah, sea demons. Oh, oh yeah, but man. you know what, Shaggy? At least it's not a ghost. There you go. go, 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 go. Ghost. And yeah, Lamar is always like, looking on the right side. Go, go, ghost. He stuttered like four times. I could have sworn the dog talked just there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, Lamar, the whole time. The Yo, so Shaggy, like, I wish the others were here right now. Okay, about the others. What do you really think about Fred? What oh, do you, what do you, Fred's what do you the think greatest. about? Yeah, really? Is he really the greatest? He bosses you around. He makes you go into places that make you feel uncomfortable. And he tells you to go first rather than him, who actually wants to go into play, is him leading the way. Well, I'm a bit of a submissive. That? Yeah, why you be a submissive like that? I cool enjoy guy. it sexually. Oh, Say that uh, again? <laughs> I, was like, I enjoy being sexually submissive. <laughs> I find <What>? Fred dreamy. <laughs> Whoa, Sorry, I'm so fucking high. I don't know what I'm saying. No, no, man, that's cool. That's, Let me that's... just give everybody another uh, reminder here. <laughs> totally cool. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. He's <laughs> no, 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 nothing wrong. You know. So uh, Fred so... is like the coolest guy at school, guys. He's the one that befriended me when I had no one but Scoob. And Scoob's like, that's right. Now I have a question for you, Shaggy. What about Velma? What about what her? Know about Velma? She's so smart. She wears glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, she does wear with glasses. You ever see her with the glasses off? What about her, Wooly? Well, is she single? Is she seeing anybody? Oh, like, you're interested in Velma? Well, let's not make it too public, but yeah. Like, she, I think you I can... saw a glint in her glasses. <laughs> I think maybe you have a shot with her, Wooly. <laughs> Let me Yo, work what... my magic. <laughs> well, what about, what about me and Daphne? She's, she's all kinds of beautiful. Oh, she's in the Fred, I promise. You sure about that? Well, <laughs> as Lamar adjusts his his hoodie, and uh, as he's sort of contemplating, you arrive sexiness. at the alert, uh, which is washed up on its side and uh, on the beach front. Like, and uh, and Shaggy sort of jumps back. Whoa! Is this like the ship? It's huge, and you see like a. It's like <laughs> heavily armed. The front looks like it's made for ramming almost. Um, the the hull is made of like thick metal. And uh, as you approach, you see alert written on the side in big, thick lettering. That's wow! Amazing. That's quite the ship. Uh, ship there, uh, Shaggy and Lamar. Uh, so what were you going to say? Well, I was, I was just going to say that that's a boat. That's the one. You go it's inside. <laughs> yeah. You go inside there. <laughs> now that you guys are high, the laugh track's loud again. You can hear it. <laughs> And I just realized how funny that is as a boat. Uh, <laughs> right? So, yeah, Shaggy, Scooby, yo, you guys ready to go in there and get, a, get an artifact? Right, let's go in. And they turn around and start walking away. 
Like we'll be inside the, the hotel. This walk was a bit too far away. Yeah. Good luck. Oh, off. They're, they're like leaving. Thanks. No, they're like leave. They're going back to the hotel. Oh, they're going shit. back to the hotel. They're pretending. Oh. They're like, this is the scene where you got to be like, no. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. no, no. But like, no. we don't want to go in. We're scared, Lamar. Okay, all, all right. right, all right. You know what? We're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna pull a thread here. See, this is the example of what real, you know, good just human beings do. Just tell me to go in. Don't no, give let's me any <laughs> options. He's just a submissive, Lamar. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want. Let's just go in together. Why don't we all just? <laughs> I don't want to do that. Don't make me do that. We just, we just go in together. You Nominate know, just... me, Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 all right just, just i go, climbed just the side of the ship okay where okay. there's like a lot there's like a ladder yeah the side of the ship right yeah yeah oh, come on chance. shaggy come on scooby come on lamar let's Bro, go right. let's get in and they scamper up bloop, 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 and they get up top to <laughs> and, I, and i open the door and it like we're on an angle so it's like boom <laughs> Oh, that's right. You gotta fucking tempt anytime they don't want to do shit. Tempt them with a fucking Scooby snack. <laughs> right. Right. That's right. Yes. That's that and Thank I pull you, out the box. Yeah. And there's a box. <laughs> like, all right, let's do it, Scoob. And they like fucking. I've run got up there. some doggy treats. And and fucking like, Scooby gets up there and he's like, <sighs> and then Shaggy's next to him. He's like. <sighs> <laughs> that's not submissive that's just weird <laughs> and, uh, now these are not scooby snacks they're no name doggy treats i hope you're okay with that what like what scoob why do you have a snack named after you anyway <laughs> <laughs> or do we just call it scooby snacks no i'm kidding there's scooby snacks and i take a couple and i Ooh. toss them inside of the uh the ship the, the door and the door scooby, and scooby <laughs> fucking dives in and and scooby doo is on the deck of the ship and he's like looking around like rawr, rawr. and uh as a main character in this story he doesn't really do anything because he's a fucking dog and yeah uh, he looks around come on shaggy you too and i toss some more scooby snacks in there for shaggy and he jumps in as well and lands <laughs> like, like a spring like on, on the bottom boards. Ow, I hit my chin. <laughs> and uh, and then the two thing. of you. And now you're looking up at the top deck. And uh, it's it looks like there's ancient stained blood. Not ancient, but oh, like man. blood yeah. stained this, this, the top deck of this. And uh, you begin descending into the hull of the ship. And uh, it's creaking. And uh, the inside is made of wood and, and water from the rain outside. It's dripping through the slats. And you see sort of a small galley area. And beyond the steps, you see the bathroom, which I can't remember what the bathroom is called on the ship. Oh, the bathroom on the, the ship. No, the, called, no. the ship bathroom. The no. brig. No. <laughs> you can take a shit in the brig. No, what is it called? I don't remember. Uh, but there's the bathroom, and then you see a, a, a few sleeping cabins, and then you see a, a sleeping cabin farther to the back, which you can only guess is the captain's quarters. All right. Well, the bathroom. That's where he said the key is, right? The bathroom. Shaggy and Scooby weren't there, and they're like, they're, right. they're like walking on repeated scenery. They're like walking through the ship, despite the fact that it's only like small. They're just walking yeah. in a loop. <laughs> Yo, guys! And I look over, and they're like walking in a circle. Like Scooby, Shaggy, like we need to get to the front of the ship here. Like, I don't want to go nowhere. This is a spooky place, Wooly. <laughs> and and Scooby's like, very rooky. All right, but we got to we gotta just figure it out. We, we finish it, and we get the item, and we go back up. It's going to be done in no time. Now. I'm making my way towards the bathroom. And there's a small cabinet in the captain's quarters that has a key. Well, I thought it was in the bathroom. It's not. It's not in the bathroom. Well, the key's in the captain's quarters. He said the key was in the bathroom and the cabinet's in the captain's quarters. Oh, fuck. Vice gotcha. versa. It's okay. You'll just spend 20 minutes trying to figure out which is which. But you'll see one yeah. cabin and you figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and So and we do that. Scooby, or Shaggy's like, you're right. 
let's toughen up Scoob. And he walks with his chest out towards the bathroom. Where are you guys going? Is what? there, yeah, to the bathroom as well. Well, I guess, yeah. yeah. Perfect. You don't... Are there any dead bodies like the guy I was talking about? Skeletons? Uh, give me a spot or... hidden. All right. Looking for dead bodies or skeletons. It's Here very dark go. in this, obviously. There's no, you don't have flashlights or anything. 68. I failed. So you don't notice anything. You don't hear anything. You don't, you know, nothing. Nothing smells. Um, okay. Yes. What's, what's in this bathroom? Shaggy. Shaggy's getting close the to head, it, looks like. Thank you. That's what I was trying to remember. The head. I knew it was something. So you enter the head, and it's a small bathroom. And uh, you do see, sitting next to the shower, the closed-in shower, the curtain drawn, you see a key hanging from a silver necklace next to the bathroom. Now, when you open the bathroom door, there's a smell that wafts. It smells like rotting food. Stench. Mm. And Shaggy perks like... around you and says, Like Lamar, is that the key? Yeah, that's the key. That's it right there. You gonna get it? Oh, I thought you were going to get it. Yeah, I'll get it. I walk in, and I slow down my step a little bit as the smell hits me a little bit stronger. Mm. And uh, I can just barely make out the glint of the key from some of the, the light from outside, and I slowly reach for it. Okay. Give me a dodge. <gasps> oh, a different kind of roll. <laughs> <laughs> 54, what's my dodge? Probably 54. lower. Oh, I've got a 42 dodge. Oh, it's man. a hit. Okay, so from behind the curtain, a fleshy, rotting hand comes out and swipes at your wrist, and you take 1d8 ah! damage. <gasps> yeah. Oh, no. How much health do you have, by the way? I got uh, HP hit points 10. Ooh. Yeah, you're, this is a strong hit. But it only does four damage. Four damage, okay. So, so I'm down to six. Pretty, but pretty bad. It takes a big chunk ah, of your damn, muscle out of your arm. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus I, fucking to, Christ! And, am I able and, uh, to grab the key? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and okay. Shaggy's like... He's like, look at all the fucking blood! And he starts running towards the steps. And Scooby's like, oh shit! And he starts running as well. And I back out of the, the head and I slam the door behind me. Well, I as say, you back the... away, you see the curtain, uh, the shower curtain being drawn as something lurches forward. You just see the silhouette <sighs> moaning. You see the dark nails now wet with your blood from either side of the curtain, but you yet to see its face. But you smell the rotting flesh and the bits of uh, skin and, <sighs> and sinew falling from its open wrists as it reaches out towards you. And you step back and slam the door to the head. God damn it. You all right, Wooly? Uh, it got me. Wooly's like, not even giving a fuck. I'm giving hard. a fuck. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Yo, man, this isn't cool, man. You got, I need like a bandage or something, man. Oh, uh, do I have any bandages on me? Sure. Yeah. Or you do like Let's a medicine have, roll or something? I have bandages on me and I and I quickly is there something chasing him or is this a hand well it was coming from the shower curtain now it's banging on the door and like all good ships the door opens in towards the bathroom so you have to kind of hold it but the key's in the bathroom with no he thing. grabbed it oh I grabbed okay the key. so I can I lock the door uh no typically bathrooms don't lock from the outside be a bad Sha <laughs> shaggy and scooby <laughs> Where'd they go? They're already like up the stairs to the top deck. Oh, I don't know, Scoob. Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> I try to medicine his hand. Sure, medicine like it. a first aid or medicine, whatever. I'll just general. medicine that shit. Sure, just throw pills at it. Fifty-five for first aid. I fail. Okay, so you try to stop the bleeding. You look around for something to tie around the wound because his wrist is sort of open right now. Uh, but you can't quite find anything to do it, and the small piece you do find is too small, and you start panicking, and you're trying to hold the door, Lamar, with all your strength, but the blood is, is starting to pool, and you're losing a bit of your strength, to be honest. Get Scooby! Oh. Get get the two of them back here! 
Shaggy, Scooby, get back here! And a head, uh, a head pokes around from the top deck. Says, "Like not worth it, Wooly." <laughs> but like, we need you, Shaggy. You're my cousin. Come on. And uh, he, he kind of pokes his head out and be like, "Maybe for a Scooby snack." As like <laughs> Lamar is like bleeding and fucking screaming and like. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'll give you a Scooby snack if you come down, Shaggy. And Ow! he's like, "Okay." And again, they come barreling down the fucking stairs. These two greedy assholes that can buy Scooby snacks. <laughs> they're just so fucking high. They need munchies. So they come around and they're like. Holy fucking shit! You're bleeding everywhere. <laughs> Quick, yeah, Scooby! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lick it up. And, <laughs> and Scooby what? starts no, licking. No, man! Don't fucking no! Get out of here! And he'll, and he'll do a he'll do a healing roll. <laughs> Scooby does. And while Scooby's healing, <laughs> and he succeeds. <laughs> Was it a hard success? Scooby's got good healing. Well, all he does is like he slobbers all over your fucking wound, and it creates Ugh. this like gelatinous bubble of like saliva that just immediately adheres anything you press towards it. And the small bit of cloth that uh, Wooly had already ripped off for you just sort of immediately seeps into the wound, and it goes dark red. But you you can kind of hold it as the creature is still banging on the door and very forcefully trying to open it. All right, I say, okay, Shaggy, you gotta hold this door. You gotta hold it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get the, the artifact. Like I don't know if I'd be any good. And he holds up his arm, and it's like a thin little piece of like. And the tiny. muscle goes. It's like. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And he like touches it, and it wiggles back and forth. <laughs> just, just do it. Just do it. And if the door opens, sick your dog on him. All right. Okay, Scoop. Do you hear that? And Scoop looks up like. Row, row. And, and then so they kind of both hold the door. Scooby holds him. Scooby grabs it with their teeth. And he grabs Scooby by the... It's just like the most in terrible way to do anything. But Scooby's biting the handle and he's holding Scooby. And they're like pulling it. Because everything has to be so fucking funny. They can't just be useful. All right. I barely notice it. And I turn around and I start staggering my way into uh the captain's quarters and you enter the captain's quarters and you see the small uh locked cabinet is not locked it's broken pieces of wood oh. are shattered on the floor and there's oh no so, so i got this key for nothing damn and it i look around and there's no idle no small statue anywhere no but you do see something rising from the bed and in the dim light of the cabin you see the flesh falling from its skin you see its sunken hollow eyes as it sits forward and begins towards the door to the cabin um i would like to quickly roll a uh spot hidden to see if anywhere around here i can see do it for sure this this thing this uh idol bust absolutely no and you see nothing you see nothing. <laughs> Every time uh, that, I always think of uh, fucking what's that movie? You see nothing. You get nothing. Uh, Willy Wonka. Oh uh, yes. At the end, right? Where he's like, "You get nothing. You voided your contract when you licked it." Blah 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 blah. blah. So he's such a thinking, such a great fucking Gene Wilder. So good. I was thinking, uh, there will be blood. I drink your milkshakes. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> Different. But that's where I was going. The creature begins lumbering towards you, and and Shaggy and Scooby, in just the most assholeish way, are like trying to hold. It. But it's very a man with one fucking bleeding arm was holding it better than these two assholes. Holding what? The door to the bathroom shut to the head. Oh right, 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 right. <laughs> um, well, Lamar, what do we do? Do we run? I or fight. Slam the door behind me. Actually, well, can I do a spot hidden? Sure. Okay. Might as well try. Might Before, as well try. As I reach for the door, I get a 17. That is a hard <gasps> success. Nice. Excellent. And you see what uh, Wooly saw. You see the broken splinters on the floor. You see the creature rising. You glass the room very quickly and see nothing. But you do see the telltale sign of wet boot prints leading away from the broken glass and as you look down by your feet for the first time you see them heading up the steps as well 
And I slam the door and say, follow me. Oh, okay. Steps. Oh, and uh, yeah, close the door behind us. And I yell for Shaggy and Scooby. Come on, up the stairs, Shaggy. Like, can we get out of here? And Scooby's like, like yeah. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. And they all fucking run out. As the thing comes out. And uh, they zoom past you on the stairs. And you spin as they go past you. Oh, Jesus. And uh, you take 1d8 damage. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they yeah, I was just to say, what And the they hell? barrel out onto the sand out in front of the alert as the two of you make your way up to the steps on or to the top deck. Following the footprints. Okay, so yeah. And when you're on the top deck, a bolt of lightning uh, quickly illuminates More the beach. It's a long storm. Get, it's, hey, man. It's fucking scoop. Actually, has it's been like half a <laughs> give me uh Give me a uh, spot hidden roll. Somebody. You take it, Wooly. All righty. Does this sound like rain, or does it just sound like I'm hitting Oh, zero. No, zero. The opposite. That's the worst. You can get. What? Zero, 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 one, or zero, zero, zero? It's just zeros. Zero. Really? So we've rolled two one hundred in this game. Uh, wow. That's amazing, though, Wooly. What are the odds? Did you roll 100? I rolled 100, yeah. My first oh, roll my was 100. Oh, my God. God. I don't see anything. In fact, when the lightning strikes, I close my eyes. Ah! And an old mother dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I don't get it. Lightning, lightning crashes. Oh, yeah. Lightning crashes. And an old mother dies. Or is it cries? Maybe I got the lyric wrong. Maybe that's why. Whatever. Um, she opens her eyes. Yeah. Play Play blue blue eyes. <laughs> Play out blue color guys. Anyway, um, you're on the top deck, and they're, they bail out to the beach, and you guys uh, are kind of standing there, and you close your eyes and you see it. And luckily, Shaggy is so fucking high, he's got like eagle vision. He's like, like these tracks are leading off towards that lighthouse. And sure enough, wouldn't be a stream without uh, sure enough. The hotel leads down to the beach, sure which leads to the to the alert. But from the other side of the alert, on up to a, a long stretch of uh, road up to a a beautiful lighthouse you see the boot prints leading all right let's go let's let's get this thing and get back i gotta go to a hospital and lamar oh you can try God. to do a first aid roll on your own hand if you want yeah i'll try to i don't think i have much first aid i imagine not yeah well actually the bleeding has stopped because scooby licked it yeah that's true so that's you're not true. yeah i'm fine i just need health yeah you just kind of wrap it around you're like fuck it um, and so you start heading through the, the night, and as you look back at the alert, you do see movement from the top deck, but you can't quite make it out in the darkness. And you begin heading towards the lighthouse. Isn't Lighthouse the band that does that, actually? No. Isn't it the lighthouse? That's, it's uh, live. Live, that's right. Okay. But their L. lighthouse is a band. I know they are, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> L.I. <So. laughs> There's an E in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I justify things. <laughs> so is that that band? Uh, no, but they are a band, so you know. I was yeah, they're right. close. I mean, they did sing something, right? <laughs> they're, 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 they play guitars. <laughs> they had lyrics. Come on. Guitar in yeah, yeah, yeah. Had to be close. The lead singer's got pale blue colored eyes. So, um, yeah, we reached the lighthouse. Yeah. Any okay. Sign so, of, any sign of Velma? So you reach the Daphne bottom. Or no, friend? they're back at the hotel, like like far, far. Trying back. to capture. Yeah. Probably having a threesome. Uh, if Fred is lucky, I don't think Fred's in. I think they both could come on to him tomorrow, and he'd be like, "We need to set up a trap." He's just such a <laughs> fucking asshole. He's just so <laughs> such a robot, oh. and uh, the disdain I have for these characters. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so there's a winding path uh, with bushes on either side leading up to the lighthouse, which illuminates the hotel every once in a while as it as it spins and the lighthouse is old ancient cobblestone all the way up until sort of this beautiful white marble or white stone completes the, to the red roof and as you stand at the bottom of the lighthouse looking up you get an eerie sense an ominous sense as if you're being watched like this is pretty spooky guys oh uh, you're telling me shaggy i don't even remember the last time i was even on a beach let alone a haunted beach and a haunted lighthouse with a boat and a bunch of people that love to get into trouble and what the fuck am i doing here shaggy i don't even understand anymore Willie, like, take it Willie, easy 
Oh. Damn it. Come on. I slap him a couple times. Do it. Come on. Slap him. <laughs> yeah. We okay, gotta stay right. focused, all right? You're right, Lamar. You're right. This this right. shit is real. This this actually happens. Someone watching us. And, and look, you do up. see from from high up, uh, there is a figure uh, in like a, a, a rain slicker, um, sort of leaning off from the very very high. And you just see the silhouette against the lightning in the sky, leaning up, and he, then he sort of leans back from uh, from view, and you know. Oh my god. Slicker. He must have the idol. We need to get it. Obviously, that man was telling the truth. I'm injured. I think one of you guys should lead the way. Shaggy, Scooby, go first. I'll give you some fucking Scooby snacks. I swear to God. Like, fuck you, Wooly. I ain't going first again. (laughs) And Scooby's like, rocket. And he walks up and he grabs his teeth on the table. And he turns it and he opens the door. (laughs) And Scooby walks in. I'll send the dog <laughs> to the dark. Um, to the dark. Uh, so it's Scooby, me, Shaggy, and then Lamar is going to stay outside. Uh, no, I'll come in. I'll come in too. Well, Lamar, stay by the front door in case the person bo- double backs. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'll stay here. I can stop them. And uh, as you walk in, you see. Um, Oh, okay. So you walk in and you see a massive figure leaning over you. And in a bolt of lightning, Scooby jumps up into your arms, Wooly, and says, Roll me, Rory! Just out of Lamar's ears. And Shaggy, or Lamar, flicks on the lights as you then see the wax sculpture from earlier sitting there. But its head is sort of cut here and it's sort of like off and you see it's hollow inside like this is a costume oh you're right shaggy it is a costume what the hell you mean does this sort of thing happen often where Um, bad bad guys wear costumes like literally all the time <laughs> and uh as he's looking at the costume you see another wax figure of like uh, of a merman sitting there again hollow and you see another wax figure of wolfman and uh and uh as you're uh, looking at the wolfman one uh shaggy's like this one doesn't even look real and then it lurches forward and grabs uh shaggy and he's like Whoa! And he runs up the stairs with a bloop, 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 and the creature turns and <laughs> rrr, starts following him. And do you engage or do you just let what happened happens? Uh, I engage after it goes up the sta- after it starts to chase Shaggy up the stairs. Perfect. So what unfolds over the next way too long a time is a series of the creature chasing Shaggy up the stairs. And then Shaggy chasing the creature down the stairs. And then Scooby chasing the creature up the stairs who's chasing Shaggy. And then you chasing Shaggy up the stairs. And this sort of presents itself and there's in doors a variety and kind of, of different ways yeah, yeah until you're at the top and then he's at the top and then you're at the fucking top and then it's sort of you know yeah and then there's always that scene where that's there's always there's that part where like you like stop and you're panting and you're like oh that was close and you turn and you realize you're not with shaggy anymore you're with the bad guy and then you run <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and lamar what are you doing this whole time Oh yeah, I'm I'm standing by the door looking at my watch every now and then. <clears throat> yeah, and you're so Lamar, you're just like unfolding this, like watching this sort of like fuckery yeah, present itself like, as you're just like leaning against the fucking door. Yeah, the monster doesn't pay any attention to me. It runs by me like twenty times. And yeah, and just, like, like despite the fact that you've seen the two creatures completely vi- like empty and obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, they're, you're still treating it like it's a real creature. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of it, uh, it it just ends up fumbling and it falls down and blah, 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 as it lands at the very bottom, you uh, see it fall right before you, Lamar, and its gloves fall off and you see human hands sort of patting around and the mask it's wearing is sort of twisted half on and you can hear a voice inside like... Blah, 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 blah. And I just step on the chest of it. Stop moving. Quit moving. 
and I reach down and I say, Wooly, Shaggy, you here for this? <laughs> oh, yeah, I sure am. I mean, yeah, yeah, Lamar, pull off the mask. All right, here goes. And I pull it off. Woo! And as you pull off the wax mask, sort of like, which is slick with with uh, the man's sweat, you see uh, a fairly, an older looking man, gray in his, in his side of his head and gray in his beard, dark eyes and, and sharp eyebrows. And uh, he looks at you and he pulls a pair of glasses out. And he looks up at you and he says, damn you, damn you. How did you find me? Uh, are you Mr. Hyde? Yes, of course I'm Mr. Hyde. Uh, I thought I so. I knew no. it. Yeah. I was trying to scare out all the guests of this hotel. It was a very yeah. clever plan. I don't Shut think anyone would Shut up for a minute, Mr. Hyde. I don't think anyone you... would have sussed it out. <laughs> Shut up. Have you got an idol that you stole from that boat? I was trying to get the guests out of the hotel because I wanted to buy up all the land. And if I buy up all the land, then I get to own all this place and I and will I tear just... down that blasted hotel. And you look up at Wooly and he's just rolling his eyes. Do and, you have the eye? And like Scooby, Shaggy's like watching like, oh man, that's like totally un unplanned. I didn't expect <laughs> that in the slightest. And Hyde's like, and the truth is, I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you damn dastardly kids. Is that the line? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm actually 18. No, meddling. Sorry, this is important. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. Yeah, I'm actually 18 years old. You know, uh, you look 18. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You look a lot older than I thought. Yeah. So I'm no kid. Yeah, so uh, shouldn't we call the cops or something? My Do you have the idol? Is my find question. My idol. Um. Yes. Yeah, so what idol are you talking about? Oh, the from one the, I fucking from, took. Yeah, of course. And, and I pull he... out my switchblade and I start stabbing him. Oh in the fucking chest. shit! Oh Jesus Christ! Stab, Jesus. Stab, and Shaggy's stab, like, stab. What the Jesus hell? Jesus fucking Christ, Wooly! No, you don't know. You don't understand. This is just fucking serious. There's gonna be demons coming back. And, and, and as as you as he's bleeding, and like the blood is like splashing out of his mouth. What the fuck? I just wanted to buy some fucking land. It's like <laughs> it's like splattering everywhere, and like it's like wetting your face, Lamar. And like Scooby's freaking the fuck out, and Shaggy's like, Oh my god, I'm way too fucking high for this. As you're stabbing him, the blood is is pouring out of his mouth, and he's sputtering and coughing. And you see the statuette is sitting on the table. And blood splashes on it. And as it does, a dull green light begins emitting from the room. And Shaggy's like, Oh shit, Wooly, what'd you do? The man in your arms, you're sort of holding him by like the chest as you're like stabbing him repeatedly. Yeah. He fucking like just he's dead and he like falls over, the glasses smash on the floor. And Shaggy You don't understand. But like, what is this? And he picks up the statue and it's like pulsating and glowing. And Shaggy's like, oh God. And he drops it and his hands are all burnt. He's like, fuck. And it's on the ground like a solid clunk. He's oh like, no. Jesus Christ. And he runs outside of the lighthouse and, and Scooby's like, Ruby fucking rule. He runs out after Shaggy. <laughs> oh no, Wooly. What have you done? What have you done, Wooly? What have you done? I look at the, the pulsating statue and my eyes go a little distant and a song starts playing in my head and it starts with whistling. It's like, <laughs> and I turn around twirling the, um, the, the fire poker as I look down at the bloody body and I look at, at Wooly who's just killed this man and I go turn around and I walk down the path towards the the museum slash hotel and I walk inside I open the door well as you so okay so as you leave, <laughs> as you leave the thing are you picking up are you picking up the statue Alex or are you just fucking I I'm still staying there is Lamar I think Lamar so Lamar leaves he so he heads outside I wrap the statue and I take off my jacket and I wrap the statue in my jacket and I carry it out with me okay and it's obviously you, hot, right? Yeah. As you begin walking outside, you're holding the jacket. Lamar is sort of walking absentmindedly with like the cane <laughs> swinging. And you see something from the water. You see figures approaching from the water towards the hotel, walking up towards the lighthouse. And there's sort of a high road from the lighthouse to the hotel. And there's like the beachfront. And you see Scooby and Shaggy like took obviously the high road. 
and you do too oh, as you see the always face. taking the high road eh and as you as you two leave and you see a, a crash of lightning illuminating all the creatures clawing out of the sea you know these these creatures like the ones on the boat but also more fish like more inhuman oh my god you stand at the top both awestruck at the sight of these creatures pouring towards the hotel and you quickly follow shaggy and scooby i'm assuming yeah and and running now um i i grab lamar i said don't think about it just run run lamar and i grab and i race past scooby and this time they are the ones left spinning yeah and i'm running up and lamar are you running too or are you still taking like the casual still pretty casual okay and like he, he like grabs onto me and i kind of look at him and for a second i shake out of it and uh, i actually yeah so i shake out of it and i go oh yeah yeah okay yeah and i i follow him inside okay and so the two of you run inside don't worry dustin we don't need to do sanity rolls they're going crazy um the two of you run inside and uh you burst in through the front a uh, hallway and give me a roll <laughs> All right. Uh, a dodge roll, both of you. Okay. Failure. Okay. Uh, also failure. Perfect. So you burst in through the front door <laughs> of the hotel lobby, uh, passing Shaggy and Scooby. And as you do, a massive cage comes crashing down on you, the same cage that was planned oh, for the For villain. Mr. Hyde. Uh, and as you do, you, you come into the lobby, uh, the well-lit lobby, and you see Velma... Daphne and Fred all standing around one of the ghouls from the ship tied to the chair. And Fred turns to you. Well, guys, it's about time you joined us. We solved it. And he walks over to you guys and he's about to let you the cage. He says, oh, I'll just stay there for a minute. Guys, you wouldn't believe it. And he, in the most proud and fucking cocky way, he's like, we figured it out. And I don't think it's too much to say that this has been a real mystery. And Velma begins prattling on about all the evidence. As you hear the back door begin to creak and the windows on either side of the buildings sort of begin to buckle and pop with the weight of the creatures that are flooding this place, the three of them stand in such proud fucking arrogance standing over this very clearly to your eyes creature of the night um, as they begin walking and, and Velma sort of begins pontificating the first clue was the glasses they were manufactured in England and after a little <laughs> bit of research on Hyde we found out that Mr. Hyde always carries his second pair and they're the same glasses that he wears and then Daphne steps up which made us think maybe Mr. Hyde was the one behind it all trying to make Mr. Schneebly sell the property so he could tear it down and build condos. And again, as they're prattling on, you yeah. can you kind of hear smashing in the back rooms and you hear sort of the doorways upstairs. She, you guys. And Fred is like, and then it was pretty easy. We thought that maybe he'd be dressed as the Frankenstein monster, but obviously he chose a ghoulish ghoul to project himself. And that's what led us to believe. And Fred reaches down and he grabs... Uh -huh under part of the ghoul and as he brings up a piece of f rotting flesh from the ghoul he just stares at it for a second and looks back down and the creature who now has a gaping hole where he ripped the soft flesh from him it begins pouring down fred starts freaking out and he reaches down again to grab what he can only imagine as a mask but when he grabs it this time the creature takes a massive bite out of him and as he pulls his arm away pieces of bone split and just his blood peppers Daphne and Velma as they begin screaming the creature immediately lurches forward out of the binds as you hear the back door crash down with the weight of the ghoulish creatures and the windows on either side smash and at that moment Shaggy and Scooby come pouring in through behind you and they're like <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! And they <laughs> go flip the fucking gate, gate for you and the two of you are free. As Fred's now like fucking bleeding everywhere and the two of you are now free in the lobby. Velma's freaking the fuck out. Daphne's like, ah! And Mr. Schneebly's at the top of the stairs and he goes, I think I solved it. As he looks down, he's like, fucking hell! And he turns around and he gets, and just runs. And uh, I, I turn to Lamar and I say, help me get this metal cage off. And we both, Right. Out. I think Shaggy yeah, Shaggy got us. Slipped it for you. 
So oh, I grab I grab Daphne by the hand. And I say, "Let's go." And I take her upstairs instead of going outside. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I and I and I go for Velma and I put her arm around me, but as I'm putting her arm around me, I'm seeing Fred on the floor struggle with his arm that's bitten and and I I just say, "This is for your own good." And I take out my 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 switchblade and I start Stabbing him in the neck and in the, and in the chest, <laughs> and you just and, I, and you just I just wanted to do this the whole time. You're stabbing, oh. and as you're stabbing, the blood is is flecking off and filling the knife, and you're you're running the bone against the cartilage. Yeah, the and knife before the cartilage and the bone, and you're just slicing it over and over and over. And before I uh, and and by the time I'm I'm finished, about twenty jabs, I realize that he's not even. No, he's there. just a gurgling mess of like. He's not there anymore. He's no, like, he's totally lifeless. He died instantly. Almost. And I've got Velma's arm. Your, your around blade me and is I, just bending and chipping into the stone. I also under, your blade take, is chipping into the stone yeah. underneath the fucking lobby carpet yeah. as you're just like stabbing it over and fucking over. Woo! 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 What the fuck? You're what the fuck are you so doing? Hard. Come on, Willie! You're bleeding. Your own right? hand oh, is bleeding. Oh, oh yeah. You're... And I've got Velma, and I we we run upstairs as well. It was so was was good. Velma. It was Velma's just like, so good. Ah, like watching so you. Good. <laughs> she's like watching you cut the wound over and over and over again, and she's like just freaking the fuck out. When you go to grab her hand, in your mind, you're like this heroic leader, and she sees this fucking maniacal, blood-soaked man with bits of his own <laughs> fingernails stuck in the open wound of Fred's <laughs> Ooh, fucking neck. As you're like, come with me, and she's like, no, and she runs down the hall, and then she does the fucking creatures envelop her and just rip her apart in front of you, and her fucking scalp gets like taken off and her like to me she just gets clawed and like poured into the and to me creatures. there's like this big scene where i'm like velma no yeah and in real life it's really like, like velma no, oh, no. okay and, bye okay bye yeah and scooby and fucking shaggy are like fuck this and they grab the now full jerry can and they fucking bolt out the front door and, and then Lamar, you're upstairs with Daphne, who's just screaming, yeah, just like yeah. right in your face. She's like, ah. catatonic. And I, I'm like, Wooly, Wooly, get up here! Come on, pass me the, pass me the idol. And I follow them up, and I, and yeah. So and as I, you run up the stairs, run the, the creatures are surrounding you. Give me a, a dodge roll. Who? You? Because the creatures are like busting through everything, and you've like spent a long time cutting over and over into Fred's oh right uh, I fail bad okay so uh, you did get destroyed tell me how um, <clears throat> as, as I continue to uh, stab I stand up and Belma runs away from me and, and I and I call out ah! and I toss the idol am I able to toss the idol that's a good question maybe I should roll for that you eh? absolutely can toss the idol so you'll have to you have to like try to do it, but you absolutely can. Let's see. Psychology, persuade, firearms, first aid. If I don't have a skill, what do I do? Just uh do Sleight of hand. Sleight of hand makes sure, sense. Hand. Let's do that. I don't have that either. Um you should have throat or something. Survival. I don't have throw <laughs> at all. Oh, then uh So I'll just I'll just do dodge again. Just roll for it and I'll tell you if you succeed. Oh, I rolled the exact same thing I just rolled. 84. Yeah, no, you don't succeed. So you, you pull out the idol and so you I, go to toss it, and it just hits about halfway in the stems and then comes rolling back yeah. down. And as and as that happens, I, I get the... I get I, I feel an, a mouth on my arm, and it bites into the flesh of my arm with excruciating pain right through the muscle. And then I feel the same thing on the back of my leg and my back and my lower back and I'm being eaten alive screaming out in agony as I taste blood in my mouth and I start to see red and I live through the entire event of people and yeah. beings eating three quarters of my body and as they pull you down um, pulling your intestines out and eating them you're like choke on living. them fucking choke on them and I'm like <laughs> how could this be happening which is by the way like one of the most badass deaths ever in day of the dead when he fucking like uh, there's like a captain and he gets eaten and like as he's eaten he, they're like pull him apart and he's still alive 
and like yeah. they're eating his intestines and he's like fucking choke on them it's so good <laughs> yeah anyway so great. you watch this unfold lamar yeah and the idol is about and halfway between you as soon as i see that the idol is well it's semi-reachable but i turn to daphne i say daphne daphne you gotta go daphne you gotta run yo I've always thought you were the most beautiful thing in the world. I also think you're very smart and wonderful. I think I might actually love you. And so I think you need to run. You need to stay focused. And if you can get to room 303B, then you can get out the window and climb up onto the roof from there and then wait it out, hopefully, until the police come. But for now, I need you to try to get there. And I'm going to go back for the idol. But I just wanted to let you know that I, I did have these feelings for you and you're gonna make it all right and she looks at you and she's like lamar I, I never knew and she like her eyes glance down to the like the decapitated corpse that's fred and she's like if you live through this you can take me out for a milkshake and then she runs <laughs> damn straight all right let's get this fucking idol her words give you a sense of confidence and for the moment your entire body it erupts in this sense of like you can do fucking anything all right let's and, do this and as you come to the top of the stairs you see my dead body lying on the stairs and because i failed so bad the idol is still in my hand burning through my jacket which i wrapped around it okay <laughs> yeah it is. Uh, just I'm like, like crisp hand crisp hand yeah you can do this lamar you're a point guard on a basketball team <laughs> you know how to get in and out quickly <laughs> you know hello hey hey okay they're still there oh, yeah. okay i'm gonna roll you don't I have got to a, you're gonna fucking succeed at this i got a 33 on a dodge of 35 you're perfect so 40. you not only get the statue you do it with fucking style show me what happens all right so uh i uh make my way down two steps and i realize that rushing probably isn't the best tactic as there's this creature reaching up through the banister and i take my fire poker and i stab it in between the eyes and then i pull it out and there's green goop on it you pierce it I... right in the fucking head at that point like yeah and i pull it out and i say who's next fuckers and I kick one down the stairs and it topples backwards and then it lands on two other ones. And I say, damn, straight. And then I go down and I see that my friend Wooly's all uh, eaten up and mangled. And I take I take the the, the coat <laughs> and, I, and I grab it, but I find that his, his rigor mortis is grabbing onto it really <laughs> tight, you know? And then I, then I, so I like, I pick all of him up. And I say, this is for Wooly. And I pick up Wooly and I throw him so hard that his fingers crack off. And I hold <laughs> on to the, the thing. And then Wooly goes flying into the, the, the sea the of guy, monsters. The what sea happens of is monsters. like he, you throw him and his like hand snaps on the banister and it like like an upshot and like a basketball it like flicks out of your hand and like and you catch it midair and it burns you for a second, but you're so fucking badass you don't even yeah. notice it and then you dump it in your fucking bag. Dunk yeah. it. You dunk I, it. I dunk, dunk it. it. Swish. Just like I always dunk thought. Just like Michael Jordan. And I run up the stairs and try to catch up with Daphne. And you run up and you do. You, well, Daphne's on the third floor. This guy's just on the second floor. He's only a few doors down. Are you trying to give him the statue? Or you're... Yeah, I run up. I give him the statue. All right. So you first. run up to the door and you knock and he opens the door and says, They've been coming from the seas. I've, I've seen them everywhere. Do you have the statue? Please tell me you have the statue. Yo, man, easy. I got the statue. It's right here. Thank God. And he grabs it. And he runs over. And he's like, ah! And he puts it down on the next one. He says, oh, okay. And he grabs a big, thick book with it. almost looks like a human eye on the front of it. And he begins reading some sort of weird Kandarian incantation, which... It's not the thing, but he's like, I attack Hatchin, Gornst, and Rand, and Nathan, and Janst, and Ralu, and Hard, and Smask, and Stones, and Jens, and Markiston. And as he keeps talking, you feel a rumble. The entire building shakes, and you look towards the top of the steps, and it looks like the creatures have stopped ascending. And you turn towards him, and he shuts the book. And he looks up towards you with a sinister smile. 
And he says, thank you for letting me bring him. And as you look to the end of the hallway, you see the seafront. You see the lightning in the water dotting the window pane. And from the deep, dark depths, out in the sea, you begin walking towards the window. And you see the waves come as a massive creature beyond any size that you could have understood begins rising from the water. Its glowing eyes deep beneath the water begin illuminating the beach as the creature depicted in the statue begins rising. Cthulhu has come. And we're going to end it there! <laughs> nice. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this was Scooby-Doo and the Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, Justin. I just read that now. Uh, yes, as... <laughs> Let me just rephrase this. He looks and shuts... And this is what you see depicted before the yeah, 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 yeah. And you take a slow walk, and the camera <clears throat> turns and pans back towards your face. Godzooks. <laughs> <laughs> <Everybody around. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this was Call of Cthulhu, or Scooby-Doo and the fucking Call of Cthulhu. Uh, thank you so much for being with us tonight, and thank you for suggesting. <laughs> oh, um, man. What an interesting mashup of system. Uh, that worked really? actually pretty well, though. Yeah, it was, it was satisfying. It was. Oddly yeah. satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, ninety nine percent of that was unplanned, so that felt pretty. You know, it would. It, the only thing that would have made it better at all is if we had more players, and that's the only thing. You know, I don't but know. It yeah, it worked well with just two people adding to the. Well, I think it, it did because it made the, the the NPCs stand out a bit more. It did, yes. I think, and unfortunately, which... Scooby Doo is like important with the NPCs. But in 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 the problem, it's not a problem at all. What I was going to say is, you did an awesome job, Harlan, at playing those NPCs because. Without a GM like you doing what you did, that would not have worked. You know? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Playing I debated all those characters. literally up to the first like five minutes before I invited you guys on. I was like, should I have the spooky Scooby game in? Should I not? I was like, maybe I'll just start with them and you're the backup squad. And like Scooby Game Man? Scooby Gang in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, maybe I shouldn't even bother having the fucking and then I was the like, oh, I'm glad you did. I'm glad was... you did because it's like the whole point of like yeah. Scooby Doo. Like, how do you yeah, make something a Scooby Doo? That's what I was like, I realized. I was like, Scooby Doo is basically about the characters, so I was like, kind of yeah. important to have them in. And I'm glad I did. Uh, yeah, that was really that worked out so much better than I thought it was going. <laughs> yeah, I, that was fun. So it was little. it was cool. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm glad everyone had fun. It seems like the community really liked it too. Yeah. 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 Fantastic, and I loved your character. What's that sound, Alex? That's my dryer. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that was when when I was rolling. No! <laughs> when I was rolling, you either went mute or like AFK or something, and like it stopped. And I was like, "Whoa! Did I just like did my internet cut out? Like it's so much quieter." <laughs> oh yeah. What yeah, happened? Yeah. No, Sorry. I was, I'm always here. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that was good. I, I yeah, I want to yeah, stress I how little I had planned. <laughs> not because of whatever but i just i just want to stress that i had the write-up for francis whalen yeah but you know what you had the that's the, it you had the essence of scooby-doo which i think was like most important before we came on i was like i'll just watch an episode of figure yeah out. you got all the trope or you got a lot of the tropes i don't know if it's all of them but like so many of them and i think that's what really made it fun for me yeah just, i mean I enjoy just being like, what the fuck? Like, this doesn't make any sense. And you don't get to do that in most games because you're trying to support the GM, you know? Right, it's kind of fun. Now... <laughs> and me too, it was really fun to, like, actually fucking cut up uh, Scooby-Doo. I know so many of you guys love Scooby-Doo. Uh, and I, I don't hate it. My mom loves Scooby-Doo too. But, like, yeah. it, also a lot of it's really kind of stupid. So it's kind of fun to have such oh, yeah. disdain. Well, it's like, <laughs> I, I was funny enough to prepare for this. I was like trying to YouTube a bunch of Scooby-Doo, but you know what? They don't have it on YouTube because it's like all like all illegal, right? Yeah. So I ended up, I ended up watching these like really strange YouTube where people have uploaded quote unquote full episodes, but it's like someone with a camera and they're like going close to their screen and away from their screen yeah, so that so they, they can't, can't actually, yeah. And it's like trippy as it is like that alone was like 
fucking me up. I was like, I can't watch can't this. Enjoy it that way, yeah. I'm not even enjoying it. I and, did not yeah. end up finding one on YouTube that was like cut up into six parts, and that worked. Okay. Uh, good. So I guess they got somehow some legal legal way around it that way, but. Uh, yeah. But yeah. yeah. No, Scooby Doo's fucking funny. It was it was a good suggestion. <clears throat> I think Dustin suggested that too. So well done, Dustin. Yeah. So was that like is that like a meme or like where does Scooby Doo and the Call of Cthulhu come from? I don't know. Dustin, what inspired just, you? I think it was us. Because he's he just said highest of five. Call of Cthulhu. And I asked him to enjoy it, and Dustin said absolutely. Um, but I'm curious what inspired. Because uh, yeah, I, I, well, you know what? We talked before about doing um, like sequels or spinoffs of like you know like I always wanted to do Jurassic Park two, like but but pretending the others didn't exist. Like what actually yeah. happened when Alan Grant left the island? Like I, I would love to do sequels <laughs> like that, like Beetlejuice two. We or should. Like we There's, should. I've had a few ideas of like, but like honoring the characters and like, like I really, really would love to do a Fifth Element, like, like continue on two? from there. <laughs> yeah, Fifth Element. I would. Sixth I would. Element. Corbin <laughs> Dallas, fucking Lilu, and just to see. Yeah, like, movie, like, movie, uh, sequels. Yeah, like fake, yeah. like fake fucking sequels for movies that didn't get one just to see what three hour sequels <laughs> yeah but yeah but actually now that i think about it i think it almost makes more sense to do tv shows like this because there's more to it it's easier to kind of continue on rather than a movie because there's not enough often movies don't have enough character development we could do an arrest development That'd oh weird. and then <laughs> we'd have to really get Harlan was tired of making his plans for this week's episode. But like it's gotta be a show that was like canceled or like had a too repetitive format or something like yes. that. Like yeah, yeah. well we talked about we talked about doing as a joke, um what's the two brothers that have the uh hunt like the monster hunting? Supernatural. Easily, oh yes easily could do a supernatural i still want to do RPG. that i still want to do that like easily could do that that's on top of my list actually. that would be so Thanks fucking easy to, to do because not only are like could you riff off each other really well it's modular i think that's the thing you have to have a show yeah or concept where it always starts the same it always ends the same and you just sort of put it like an x-files you could easily do an x-files right yeah. you could use you could CSI. you could do uh supernatural with D D or Call of Cthulhu. I mean, either or. Actually, Call of Cthulhu would probably work better with the investigation. Well, I mean, X-Files can... is basically Call of Cthulhu, except instead of aliens, yeah. it's, it's like Cthulhu. Like, X-Files or... or uh, Any of those shows. I, I can't Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> no, I'm trying to think of a show. There's a term for it, and I'm forgetting now, um, where it's like... Oh, you don't have to watch one to understand the next yeah, one? Yeah, it's episodic episodic where where they're not a story it's just like every like a crime show or like a csi we could easily take uh any show like that because this is an episodic show you can watch halfway through the season it doesn't really matter like supernatural sort of has a story x files sort of has a story but generally you yeah. don't need to watch it in in sequence so no. uh so if you guys have ideas for episodic shows again shows that you could watch season three <laughs> episode five and understand the concept pretty well to make let's make a list because there might be some really good ones in there that we could do. Deborah, Deborah, <laughs> hey, everybody loves, loves, What's that supposed to be? Everybody, everybody loves, loves Raymond. Raymond. Oh, starring Raymond. <laughs> Deborah, why are you doing this to me? Yeah. I'm Raymond. Also, oh, I just stopped uh, by. I just stopped by because I wanted to check all my grandchildren. I love here. you guys. Uh, we could do a Muppet show and do the entire thing uh, where we are. Uh, I don't understand exactly what we're going to be doing, but... Uh... And then we got to learn about the alphabet, right? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I was just going to say that. Oh, man, that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> what we need to do is just write down all the accents and, and character impressions we can do, and then just make games around them. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know I could do Shaggy, and that's now on my back burner if I ever need to uh, pull it out. <laughs> Or Arnold. All right, folks. Arnold. I think I'm going to call it a night. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Lovely to see you again. All. Yes, thank you so much yeah. for everyone who hung out. Thank you for giving us such a great idea, Dustin, who did answer and he said he grew up watching Scooby Doo. He's been around Call of Cthulhu forever. I always meant to run a Scooby Call of Cthulhu convention around. So I hope this fulfilled that 
desire, Dustin, and maybe you people will share this and be like, hey, you guys should check out Scooby Doo and the Call of Cthulhu. These guys did a cool mashup. Hopefully, it was that good. You know. It was really dark at the end, but that's okay. <laughs> really, it dark. really dark. dark didn't it? Oh, Blade, <laughs> skin, and scalp. Sorry, I like it. <laughs> I wanted to go there. I like, like it. I'm, fuck this shit. I'm tired of these. You know, I'm I was always tired of the bad guy being like, oh, guess he's just a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, true. Might as well stab him to death. I mean, what the hell, right? I think it was <laughs> great. Game. I like the Fred death the best. Like Fred death, it. yeah. Well, that's what I was going to do when I started yeah. whistling. I was just like, oh, well, we're killing people now. That's what I was working for. But I was so glad it ended the way it did. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, you guys have... Oh, Endgame. Shit. Uh, you know what? Let's do Dustin. It was his idea, and it was a fantastic Agreed. idea. And he was here. Like, Agreed. Well done, Dustin. Excellent. Oh, who won mid game? Um, Godpool. Godpool. All right. Oh, yeah, um, you were perfect. Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Hope you had a lot of fun. Uh, we will see you. Oh, I'll probably do a spooky stream this Friday. So come and hang out with that. It starts at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I just talk about space monkeys and shit. Um, and we play games that I kind of hate right now because Evil Within is not a great game. No offense, Aisha. Thank you so much for buying it for me. I feel bad <laughs> hating something that's bad for me. But they knew. They knew I wasn't going to like it. So. Um, but yeah, thank you so much uh, for hanging out, now guys. I have to Hope watch you had it. a lot of fun. Uh, and as my friend Alex always likes to say, we make shit up. That's right, we make shit up, guys. Good night. <laughs>